We're live. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and today I'm joined by my three co-hosts. God damn, it's good to be back. I missed you guys. A founding member of the R&B soul singing group, Destiny's Child, who ended up leaving the group because they wouldn't take the word child out of their name. Briar Rabbit, welcome. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, Beastly. I'm having a great time over here. I am still on a... I'm on. It's like a methamphetamine high that I've been just riding ever since the uh, the Destiny PC beta, beta Destiny Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen I've seen lots of exciting videos from you, my friend. Unfortunately for me, I was actually a little under the weather for the last week or so. You guys know that I was unable to do the show last week. I'm feeling a lot better. I still feel the undertones of sickness, but it's coming yeah. out, and so I'm really, really excited to be back. Gary Crabs Diaz. can be rough, man. Crabs can be rough. It's hard to get rid of them, fuckers. <laughs> well, damn. You put my business out there, huh? You got to hit him with the shampoo. On, on that note. <laughs> you got to hit him with the shampoo, Beastly. I've been using the steel, the steel wool brush. It, it, it doesn't work. Let me just say that. Hell of a rash. Hell of a rash. But I'm feeling a lot better. Gary Diaz, we've been missing you, my friend. Welcome home. Welcome back to Revolver Live. How you doing, my friend? pretty good man it was a it was a good successful trip i was uh I, I think the the lp is almost ready to drop i've been collaborating with some some pretty heavy hitting names um not sure what we're gonna go with but uh you, you know you can you can watch out for the the hottest vita based lyrics dropping in 2018 oh fuck that's exciting news uh as a All side day, note gary you also are the only far... vita related lyrics dropping only. in 2018 yeah <laughs> He needs a ghostwriter. I'm, I'm going to work with him and get that Vita together. We got to find Vita and find a way to make it rhyme with Pita and Lolita. Shit that you know Gary knows about. Anyway, Gary, I want you to show everybody uh, your your sweater, man. It's really really awesome. Gary is the man, the freshest member of the crew today. Would you mind showing people that beautiful Overwatch Diva sweater you got on? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually my fiance sweater by the look of it. No, it's a it's a pink <laughs> Diva it's all yours. sweater. Which is the the most swagalicious thing that I bought from your United States of Trump? It was it was amazing. It was um, available in Hot Topic for like forty five dollars. That's like crazy cheap, at least yeah. for UK prices. So uh, it was like a no no hesitation purchase. I was like, that's a pink hoodie. That's only available in skin tight small. That just says me all over it. So. <laughs> no, no, that is the here. wardrobe of a man who is secure in his sexuality. I was just getting ready to say, I'm in the dirty <laughs> south down, down here in Atlanta. There's quite a few bars you wouldn't even you wouldn't even have to pay to get into down here. Just walk up with that sweater on and say, yeah. "You come on in, sweetie." Free booze? <laughs> I gotta get sure. I gotta get my ass to hot topic. <laughs> I, know, I think you uh, you might have misspoke there, Briar. I'm comfortable in my homosexuality. That's kind of what we went with there. That was the uh, the top. But no, it's uh, it's it's comfortable. That's all I can say. You're looking Eric. good. You're looking. It good. looks good. You're fresh Great as hell. To have you back. Okay. I, it'd be hard for me to wear pink, but I'd have to do it for a diva sweater. I don't know if I think it'd it look any... good in pink. You you think so? Yeah. I, I just couldn't let my dad watch it. He disowned me. Wilson, what's going on, baby? The man <laughs> that will beat your glass if you say the wrong thing to him. Wilson, uh, it's great to see you, my friend. Thank you and Briar so much for holding down last week. Looks like you got a new location, undisclosed, but we're we're very very happy <laughs> to have you with us. How you feeling, my friend? Doing good, man. Glad to see you're feeling better as well. I'm out here uh, watching my folks' place while they're away on vacation, so I'm the master of the domain of the house I grew up with, grew up in. So it's oh, cool. Nice. It's nice and chill. Have you raided your mom's closet and started dressing in her clothes yet? <laughs> he used to. Um, I was <laughs> watching, Briar. No, <laughs> so no, you haven't yet. Not <laughs> no. First thing was raid the fridge, and there was some Lunchables in there, and I was cracking up because I was like, Lunchables in 2017. <laughs> Whoa, you were coming. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's always good to be home. Looks like you got a nice, comfortable spot to sit and do the show, and we're very, very happy to have you with us. Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. Become a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube on Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that said, welcome to Revolver Live, Episode 7. Welcome to heaven. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Yo, oh, Carrie, you just got home from Freedom Land. You just took a trip to Freedom Land, and all I'm hearing is bitching and complaining about the bathroom. Yeah. What's going on with that, man? 
Uh, did you get to shake Donald Trump's hand? <laughs> did you shake his I, hand or did you kick him in the balls? Which one was it? I didn't get to shake his hand. I couldn't find it. It was very, very, very small. tiny. I tried, I tried to find it, but it, was a, it was a tiny, tiny hand. But I'll tell you what I did have problems with, and that is American public restrooms. You know, I don't know why there's so much conflict of like, you know, transgender people wanting to get into them. I don't think anyone wants to get into them. So I, <laughs> by the end of the holiday, I was ready to just take a piss in the street. Like, yeah. it's not a comfortable place to That's be. That's usually like, my solution. <laughs> I mean, you make a great I don't know American if you guys movie. have been outside of the United States and used any civilized country's restrooms, right? I have. But I have, in fact. I've got to say to you that, you know, the, the stalls that you sit in who thinks it's a good idea to stop at the knee? Like, if you're going to do all that wood and that work to create a hinge, just run it to the floor. Run mm -hmm. it to the floor and give me some goddamn <laughs> privacy when I'm taking a shit. But then how are you, you supposed know? to, like, tap people on the foot That's to true. Yeah. Let, them, yeah. let them know you're up yeah. for yeah. sex? See, see Gary. Yeah. Here, here or that you need toilet paper. <laughs> Gary, this is the land of opportunity. Oh, is that, that what that guy wanted? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's always opportunities in public restrooms. You know, you never know who's going to sit there with He's you. He's going to be you pissed. <laughs> you know, the guy next to you could need some toilet paper. He could need a, need a friend. Anything. So you, you got to be open to opportunities in the United States. It's the land Man. of opportunity. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll allow you price, that then. Right. It comes at a price and it starts knee down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll That's, allow right. You. That's right. The knee high stall things but yes. is there any reason it's just poor craftsmanship that the door at the front has like a quarter inch gap right <laughs> so people don't even look at the vacant occupied sign they just peek through the stall yeah. to see if yeah. you're in there right yeah. right yeah that's i want to see what you're up in up. there what are you yeah. doing in there yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> That's how you get people one. to hurry up. I'm not sure if I want to use this stall when you're done. <laughs> Man, it's, that's all fine. It's when they start winking through the cubicles that you got problems. I mean, it was just, it was an unsettling experience. What I'm saying is, I'm used to in the UK, we are a very humble people, right? I'm used to having doors that go to the floor, mm -hmm. you know, a nice lock, something uh, else house. there, you know. People will stand outside a restroom for like 20, 25 minutes without knocking, we're that reserved. But over there, man, I felt like I was being rushed. I felt like, you know, I had god knows who next to me with like hairy knuckles as they went to reach for their pants it was just like yeah. it wasn't a comforting experience and i tried a lot of restrooms man i it's pretty much a, a holiday of restrooms trying to find me one that i felt comfortable in yeah but man i just didn't shit for six days that was the yeah same. that's I the way you do it man when you when you go on vacation that's what you do you just don't shit for six days and yeah. when you're at home you just make yeah, sure yeah. you shit before you leave like yeah. <laughs> and if you don't get to shit before you leave you fucking wait till you get home. <laughs> Solid advice. Oh, you know, you know, it's really sad. I'm looking at Gary's face. He looks really, really dejected. And, you know, due to his American experience, I'm guessing someone asked him, where do you get that pink sweater from when they looked at the crack? He said, ooh, yeah, I like that sweater, brother. Um, but, it but was just not nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes at a price, Gary. It's, it, it's encouraging you to do your business, get out there and be right. free. You can't be free if you're in if you're in a stall. You know what I mean. So we're encouraging you to hurry up. It's supposed to be a not comforting experience to get you out of there. Nobody wants you in there. I can tell you right now, the establishment doesn't want you in there. No hell, uh, no, they don't. They, they just have to have it. Mm -hmm. It's been money. Right. You know, and, 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 and American... honestly, if we're if we're judging the the freedom of a place based on its restrooms, I got to say Ireland has to be the most free place I've ever been because <laughs> I went to a bar there one time and they had a trough basically on the ground. With a tube that just went outside. <laughs> it's just like a hole in the wall. Are you serious? Yeah, you just you walk up, you just piss against the wall, and it flows down the wall and out, out the we, outside. We have them. That's fine. I'll get my lad out and take a piss. But when I'm taking a shit, I need the privacy, man. We have them in the UK, like the urinal troughs. And they've got little cakes and pubes floating in the bottom. It's quite a, a reassuring sight for me. That, that felt need, like home when you said that. I need to address something. You talked about the little futuristic pissers that you guys got on the street. It's like a an area that you walk into and the door goes the, the self closes cleaning behind you. you. Yeah, and it self cleans itself. Your toilets kill people where you're from. <laughs> At least ours okay. are safe. The the self cleaning thing came on to two hundred degrees and fried a man. You told me that, Gary. Okay, it killed yeah, one worry, man. What you gonna say now? It killed one man. How many people have died from intestinal discomfort because they're so, you know, perturbed entering a, a restroom in the United States? Yeah, but the Com toilet itself didn't come and kill me. In the their intestines. Yeah, the toilet didn't come and pour 
liquid hot magma on me. <laughs> I was not happy. You can't, you thing can't as well. wipe that so away, Gary. You, you think <laughs> shock and awe like was a uh, term invented for war? No, it was invented by a guy who walked into a 7-Eleven bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I found was that you guys just have no appreciation of Heinz tomato ketchup. Like, ketchup is like, how many places have I walked in? That face there, Briar, is the face that's greeted me across every day of my vacation. I'd go into Starbucks and I'd get like a nice toasted muffin or whatever they, they serve there. You know, the cheddar and bacon. Wait a and, minute. Uh, what? And then you, like, you ask for ketchup for your muffin at Starbucks? Are you serious? Yeah, like little toasted English muffin, whatever it is. And yeah. they've got... The, Everyone looked at me with that disgusted face. I could just yeah. ask them to take yeah. a crap in yeah. my muffin. What the That's, fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. And you said it wrong. It's it's tomato. <laughs> <laughs> tomato. <laughs> Say it with me. <laughs> what I resorted to doing was robbing the buffet car at night and keeping a bum bag of tomato ketchup with me. So I was equipped wherever I went. It was fantastic. Have you ever Sold heard of American. jelly or jam? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Cream cheese or butter. Yeah, cream cheese. Put that sugar or fat in it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it was... look, Gary, this is what you need to remember for your next visit to the States. If you're going to come to the States, you got to act like a statesman. you got to try some stateside uh, foods and, and, and embrace disgusting restrooms with four, four foot high walls that you can see people sitting down in. And never, ever put ketchup on any breakfast food uh, besides hash browns for the rest of your life. Yeah, we are and drowning was... in... Tomato ketchup over here. Trust me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're just Tomato. using it in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> you had, you had no right baked places. beans. No baked beans. No Four? ketchup. Breakfast was ruined. <laughs> and the Make beer was cold. You asked for <laughs> the chips and they gave you potato chips. Do you call it, it, you call it potato or potato? It's potato, tomato. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm just glad, I'm curious. I'm He's just very glad, glad to be, to be home. With you. It was, and, and I was in Florida as well, which is like walking around inside an obese person's armpit. It was just yeah. like I don't know. I don't know how you planned a Florida trip in August, but that was fucking stupid. <laughs> Usually was, plan it in like December. It was sweltering, and well, it didn't help as well that like Florida, or at least Disney World, is like. You know, like Muslims go on a little pilgrimage to Mecca and, you know, Catholics might go to the Vatican. If you're what I would call the term morbidly obese to the point that you have to go around in a scooter, it's like a homing beacon to these guys in Disney World. I have never seen a collection of them like tribes people. And they've all got these motorized scooters with fans blowing them from several directions. I think Ooh, they're they they going fans? to <laughs> Were they in the classic flying V formation as they were all going through? Like... <laughs> Man, I tell you what, like, if you get a wife like that, you pay by the pound. These are some big ass people you guys had. I was, I was impressed. If anything, we're big. Know, I think it's we're just, big here. Yeah, we it was, fuck it was like showing a showing a sign of wealth. You know that you could eat yourself into that size. It was, it was <laughs> impressive, man. Impressive. Freedom, freedom's Welcome a big to word. America. It's like Wally. Uh, you remember the movie, the, the CG yeah. movie Wally? I lived, everyone... I lived it for two weeks. Wow. It was great. Damn, it's great. Thanks, Pixar. Shit. But, um, so the yeah, trip went well us. then. <laughs> right. so overall, it was a nine out of ten. My vacation. Um, but now I'm back, looking at all of you handsome gentlemen and fine representations of America. I feel like you're like the the North Korean propaganda for America. You guys make the country look good, and then you get there, and it's just fucking chaos in the streets. And just, that's how know. I feel about it too. I just make this shit look good. Yeah, yeah. bro. You do our best. You do our best. <laughs> You just, just compared us to North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say the propaganda of the Korean government. There's a difference. The propaganda. Oh, God damn. Oh, no, just, I gotta say, the worst part about your Florida trip was you missed you missed the PC beta for Destiny 2. It's thick gear. I didn't. I didn't. And in fact, I think that you can uh, you can start evangelizing about it and I can join because I had four glorious hours of that. Oh, you had four so, hours? Oh, that's pretty I good. Four hours. Nice. The first hour of it, I I spent just trying to tweak it for the absolute maximum possible frame rate and appearance, and yeah. the the other three were enjoying the game. So that's pretty good ratio, twenty five percent to seventy five percent for PC gaming. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty is. good, right? Especially for a beta. Guys, yeah, talk to me. Talk I got to tell you, Dave. this beta. Not only was it 
absolutely fucking stunning. Like I, I've I've talked about going to the Destiny reveal event back in when was that May? I don't even remember when it was. Going out to LA and walking around the corner, like playing the PlayStation Four version of the game, walking around the corner and just standing there, slack jawed when I was confronted by the game on PC. It's just that much better yeah. looking, right? Now we've all had a chance to see it. Was I fucking around or what? Were you lying? Absolutely not. <laughs> first, okay. I've played a lot of PC games. I've never always had the most like top of the line PC. But this was one of the first times that I jumped into a PC game and was completely mesmerized by what I saw. And I don't know if it's because I care so much about the Destiny universe, because there are other games that look a lot better at ultra settings. You know, there really is. But it was something about it, man, that it felt good. And it's got me, Briar, you had actually said this, it's got me really excited for the console um, yeah. release. Yeah. They made a lot of changes to the game uh, since the console beta. So um, players who played the console beta and didn't get a chance to play the PC beta, what, what we were confronted with was a PvE situation, a PvE meta uh, that was just a lot more fun. You got supers more often. Your guns were more powerful. You felt like the powerful guardian that you were in Destiny Destiny 1. Uh, and I got to say, it turns out that is more fun, it, without a doubt. Uh, I, played this, I played the strike much more than I played it on the console because it was just more fun to play. It wasn't as tedious and as slow moving and just firing at one enemy over and over again. Which I really liked. I don't. I don't know if you guys got the same impression from PVE. PVE felt a lot better. Like it felt very tedious to go through that strike um, the first time through. I did it a couple times and I was like, eh, I kind of want to do some PVE, but like, man, that strike. It just when you get to the boss, it's just. It, it felt forever. like felt like Valus, like year one unnerved Valus. Like you're just standing there, just pumping rounds into him. Um, I felt like it was easier to play, um, yeah. and not just because it was keyboard and mouse. Because I play. Zim, um, so I'm part of the problem uh, on PlayStation 4. So, you know, I've been keyboard and mouse on Destiny for, for years and years now. But 30 frames versus 144 or 240, whatever you're playing it at. What were you playing it at was, when you tried it, Gary? I was at 144. Uh, I think Brian was 240, were you? Or 200, obviously. because you. Yeah, were it capped talking. out at 200. The beta capped out 200 frames per second? Yeah. Uh, so it capped out at 200 frames per second. <laughs> and I was... I was fluctuating depending on where I was. I'd see like as low as 130 and as high as 200. Um, probably like like the median was probably 160, 170 most of the time. Yeah. Um, and I got to say, Gary, you're right. It was easier to aim. It was easier to spin around, locate a target, and immediately headshot it because uh, you didn't have that choppiness at 30 frames per second. Um, and with the so mouse, know. especially at long range, I just felt so accurate with hand cannons yeah. and with scout rifles. I was going to say, I don't know if the game is, and it, it might be just a, a premature criticism, but what I got from PvE was that it didn't feel challenging in the slightest, and it could be partly because our power was more prevalent, our grenades were stronger, our supers were there, but mm -hmm. the Destiny enemies on a console, um, you know, you need a little bit of aim to hit them, hit their precision target spots, you know. On this, they're slow-moving beasts with huge, you know, crit spots that you just couldn't miss. Uh, at least with a, a mouse. I don't know if you got that point there. I mean, just, the strike that... wasn't that challenging. I didn't think the strike was that challenging on the console or on the PC. It was a little bit tedious on the console just because you had to stand there and fire at a guy's head for so long and then just like move on, move on, move on. Uh, whereas uh, the PC beta, you had more powerful weapons, so you definitely moved quicker. Um, the, the, the challenge of Destiny comes from damage, right? It's like the enemy's doing a ton of damage. Um, and we, you know, that that just wasn't there in the in the beta. There was one area where I I died a few times where, like, you're in this like kind of round room and you gotta like get this bridge going and there's a bunch of bunch of dogs that kind of come at you and there's a bunch of guys with like the the knives. That that part could be a little tough. And then occasionally at the boss fight, like the third phase, could get a little overwhelming. But for the most part, yeah, I would say it was pretty easy on the console and on the PC. I didn't have to aim down sights <clears throat> half the time with right. my uh with like especially with a hand cannon i mean the reticle bloom didn't feel as drastic as it did before but um the frames felt really good like all the particle effects like i love jumping into pve and just cranking the settings up to max 
looking around, was still getting on max settings 60 frames a second. That's all my monitor can handle, even though it was displaying that I was getting upwards of about 150. One, I could get to 200, but once I actually got into action, it dropped down to like the 150 range. Um, but it was an experience, man. And it's got me really excited because a lot of the changes that they made that made us feel more powerful, like a sticky grenade on the boss felt so good. I did like a thousand damage with one grenade. Yeah. You know, and it it's got me really excited for the console. It's even though console is going to be 30, like it's still a really good 30. And I actually went back and played a little bit of Destiny 1 the other night and it was like riding a bike just right back to it. You know, like it didn't really affect me at all. So I, I have a question. I, I didn't get a chance to see the, the PC beta. I was sick, but it sounds amazing. Not sick enough, man. Not sick enough. Damn it, Briar. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, those crabs, man, they're just very, they're, they don't stop. You know, even with the steel wool, they stayed there. But um, <laughs> this game sounds like it's definitely, it has the wings to, to, to be playable for a year at least. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like once the PC version comes out, uh, console gamers are more than likely, if they have a gaming PC, are going to migrate to that to play this game uh as a main system do you guys think that you'll be uh kind of dipping back into the console version uh or do you think you'll you'll be on the pc as your mainstay and kind of forget the ps4 or the xbox one uh offerings ps4 Sorry. will be my main so um, okay. not That's only for like friends lists or whatever but for clan reasons as well um resolutes made it pretty clear that like you know they're a console clan you can go play on pc all that stuff but like the community is going to stay on playstation but even before getting into Resolute, that was our plan to begin with because that's where our friends list is. It's tempting. I really want to go play as much as I can on PC. But, man, once I put a couple months into time on the console, it's going to be it's hard. It's going to be a there. wrap, yeah. Okay, well, I'll be there. Well, no, it's going to be it's gonna be hard for me to switch over to PC once I've put all that time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyway. Yeah. So what, my question what? here is, it, do you think it would have been a completely different circumstance? Because I, I guess I'm in a similar boat in the sense that I'm starting on PlayStation begrudgingly. Um, but I'll be there on, <laughs> on September 6th. Dude, you know, you we think... got four people and Trials comes out in just two weeks. I know. Trials team. Trials team. I'll definitely be there. I'm, I'm down, man. I can't wait. Better start Yo, grinding. Gary's, <laughs> Gary's fit to carry. I will drop your I'm ass saying. like a hot potato beastly if you're not max level. <laughs> I know, brother. I know. Shit. I mean, do you think that there would be a different narrative if you know we could look through our magical ball and uh, and all of the versions had dropped simultaneously, would yeah. you be starting on PS4? No, I would not. I would be starting on the PC. Uh, I would be starting on the PC uh, because I am a streamer, because I am a content creator, and I want to make content uh, that looks as good as it can. And if I can upload uh, a video that's in 4K 60 frames per second, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that makes my content look a little better to the people watching. That's better, right? Uh, I will say, though, that even if I started on PC, the PS4 would be... I would be very quick to get on the PS4 and start grinding because also because I'm a content creator and I want to see those PS4 exclusives, you know? Like, that's a big part of it. Uh, also, Sniper most rifle. of my friends are on PS4 and I'm going to want to play PS4. Yeah, I'd be... If it was the same... If they were both releasing on the same day, I would still be doing... <clears throat> PlayStation 4. Uh, mainly, I want to run through the campaign with Sam. We had a really good time doing that for Rise of Iron. So to actually have like a vanilla story to go through, kind of, well, not really vanilla, but you know what I mean, like a new game story to go through, we're pretty excited about that. So are we. Kate and I can't wait, actually, to play through the campaign together. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll double we'll double date with you guys, Wilson. Who knows? Let's do it. I'll tell yeah, you, I've been, I've been like kind of plotting out my week because... As we know, Bungie actually came out and said the raid is releasing one week after release, right? And uh, I'll be with the, the Destiny Community Podcast crew trying to complete that raid first, right? We're gonna go, we're gonna go for that race again. We're gonna go into a blind raid as soon as it releases again, and give it a shot. And that's a week to get from zero to you know max level or as high as you, close as you can get to max level, completely <laughs> geared up for a raid, and. Uh, you know, oh, I like man. to bitch about it. It's too much. It's too hard. But I'm actually really looking forward to it. I'm looking that forward sounds to that like grind, too man. much. God, bro. One week. One week. One week from zero to hero. Yeah. Your week is going to be fucked. 
I mean, just write <laughs> fuck on those seven days right? on your calendar because that's a lot, man. That's a lot of de- dedication, a lot of time, a lot of investment. And I guess, you know, if you want that big payoff, you got to put in the hours. But, geez, yeah. your I'm week a, is screwed, my friend. I'm hiring. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the local labor depot and uh, hire a few people to help me grind, you know, so I could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to like sleep for like 48 hours of on release. It's going to be really guys, hard for me to go to sleep. It's going to be like that episode of South Park where Cartman was playing his little MMO and he asked his mom to bring him food and she put a bucket behind his chair so he could lean forward and shit <laughs> and then he just eat right there. I can see it still now, Mr. Robert bringing a big American ass bucket down. Public there. restrooms still better than the restrooms <laughs> in this country. <laughs> Like what it. about um you guys want to talk a little bit about pvp with the how it, that felt a little different uh, yeah. did you jump in any pvp gary that's all i did so i had to I, I tried to exit out the story um and it just made me restart the story which was really frustrating um but you have to actually complete that first mission um to to get into the pvp and the reason that i wasn't that fussed on the pve um, being frank is that i only had four hours i arrived back in the uk uh, and had like four hours to play so that was kind of like my um my thing. So all I did was just go straight into the Crucible, um, and play that. And my God, what a difference! Because I'd say 75, 80 percent of my time in Destiny is Crucible. That's all I play, uh, and I played it keyboard to mouse for years. Like I've, that's all I've done. Uh, I can't play controller. I'll attest to that. And it was like a different game entirely. And I know it is a different game, but but at the same time, it's. It, it felt like I was playing um, a game that was designed to work on PC, that there was a shitty console port at 30 frames per second of, as opposed to it being a 30 frames okay, game. Okay, Wilson. Wilson, like, well, this no, fucking did. guy. I don't know if anyone else got that, though. It didn't feel like I was playing a console game with a keyboard and mouse. It felt like I was playing a PC game. Well, none of us play console games with a keyboard and mouse, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's well, they said, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a port, you know what I mean? It was its own separate build, you know what I mean? Right. And I think that I think that reflects in it. Like, personally, I felt like... we, we kind of I kind of talked to some friends about this uh, earlier in the week on uh, Rezocast, but we had said that there was something off about the console beta with PvP. And the changes that they've put forward from what I played on the PC beta, it felt more like Destiny 1 in the Crucible. Like, I was pulling off... It, it took a little bit more finesse, but I was pulling off 1v3s, 1v2s, one you know, team wipes. Like, that was very, very rare in the console beta. And I felt like it was just just a little touch that it needed to kind of make you feel a little bit more powerful without overdoing it and making it like spam city, you know, but I, I got it a felt question fantastic. Wilson, um, is, is the team shooting aspect of the game still like a priority in PVP? And also do you get more supers? Because you, d- during the console uh, beta, you got one super per round and you really couldn't get more than one ever, uh, no matter what you did. And to me, that was one aspect of destiny one that, was really changed in part two and that's something i'd like to see changed you know the 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 team shooting aspect where three or four people shooting at one person to get them out of the game really fast it seems pretty cool but everybody can't be there all the time so has that aspect changed and and what are your thoughts on actually having your supers more often yeah you do get your super more often there was actually one game i got my super three times because we were going around collecting orbs you know what i mean like that's not common you gotta be you gotta be having a hell of a game Hell of a game. Yes, you and your team. It was with Briar, actually. We were running around having a damn good time, man. Just picking up orbs, uh, doing supers. Uh, as far as team shooting goes, like obviously team shooting is always going to be the most effective way to take down an opponent. Um, <clears throat> with the PC beta, I don't really know if it was changes that they had made or if it was the map design, because the map design that we had for the console beta, in my opinion, it was just wide open you know very wide open i mean people are going to be coming around from every angle all the actions on b and this one it was definitely a lot more spread out there was definitely your your clustered indoor areas and then they had like an open outdoor long range area and yeah team shots were still king but like i said like if you played it correctly and used your abilities right man you could you could just run through people man like Mm -hmm. and, and it felt really good because i'm all about like 
not all about it, but like everyone likes to see a solo clutch, you know, a one V three, a, you know, you're outnumbered, you're the underdog and you end up playing skillfully and, and pulling through with the win, you know, and we were having a damn good time and I was playing on controller because I don't give a shit. And this is what I'm familiar with. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you one chat. Go ahead. Here you go. Meme it up. Let's see your best, <laughs> let's see your best memes in discord. Wilson is there you a go. Thug. I gave you one. I love it. I love it. Wilson. <laughs> You're the fucking man. Stand I gotta say up. playing with a controller felt fucking awesome. Like it felt like destiny. And uh, I got. I will also say there was a compared to the console beta, the level of competition was lower, right? Uh, there was the quick play matchmaking, the skill based matchmaking got toned down in there, so you weren't constantly just playing people who were had exactly the same ELO as you, right? So, like, there were quite a few blowouts that we had, uh, and then there was also some matches that were really tough. We even lost one. Two points. <laughs> but who's counting? I'm um, not and al also, that. we were playing. You know, when we played on the console beta, we were playing a population that had been playing uh, Destiny for three years. Whereas on the PC beta, there were certainly people who, had, who were doing that and came over to the PC beta. But there was also people who were brand new to the game, didn't know exactly how grenades worked, didn't know how the supers worked, and you could see that in their movement. Right? You could see that. You know, a lot of people were brand new to the. Game. Almost like but I mean, it f it felt. Um, I don't know if you guys had that same perspective, but it could be the builds. I don't think it was just the map, but it felt like a different game. The sandbox in Destiny Two console beta, um, it really had me concerned for the game. God, that thing triggers me when I see it. Um, the sandbox had me concerned for the game, whereas this one had me excited to play the game. Like the way that Destiny Two played on the console, it, it just it didn't have me very hyped for what we were going to have do, do you feel like it was you know that the console beta was maybe a poor representation of the final product whereas this is far closer to what it is we're going to see maybe i haven't actually looked at like damage numbers on what weapons were doing in the console beta compared to the pc beta but i think it'd be worth looking at because you know it didn't feel like i had to be part of you know i didn't have to group shot to get a kill i felt like i was much more able to lone wolf around the map and be successful with that i but i didn't actually look at what the what the weapons were doing as far as damage well, it just felt like a four shot hand cannon it's still a four shot hand cannon but my shots were all connecting whereas mm -hmm. on the console I was I was hitting at medium range, um, which is where the hand cannon is effective. They did and make some changes a, after, yeah. you know, based on feedback from the console beta. And they said that those changes, a lot of those changes would be reflected in the PC beta and then in the final game. So we'll have to see, though, because they are also they are going to have slightly different metas. Right. Is the Bungie's come out and said that the, the PC beta in or the PC version of Destiny and the console version of Destiny may feel a little bit different. And and Gary, another thing to, to take into account. Now, I haven't played the PC version, but betas, for the most part, are ways for developers to, to tweak and fine tune their product. And, you know, initially with the, the console beta, there was a lot of complaints and people felt that certain things needed to be tweaked. And, and that was reflected in the PC version. So I don't think that it was a poor representation. It was probably just the first represent, representation of what they were going to put out for a beta. And as time goes on, developers change things, tweak them for the better. And it sounds like at least from what Briar says, uh, these changes will be reflected in uh, the final product on, on console as well. So, Yeah, I know Gary was making fun of my video a little bit earlier, but I'm not fucking around that the, the PC beta did make me more excited for the console release because of the changes they made between the console beta and the PC beta. Like, the game feels more fun to me now than it did yeah. uh, during the last beta. Like, I watched that video, and actually hearing you say that on your video was the thing that got me more excited for the console version. When you announced these changes and the fact that they were coming to the console version, that really got me hyped. And today, listening to Wilson stand up for the console peasants, thank you, sir. I feel really good about playing this on my PS4 now. They want to ban so, us, Beastly. They want to kick us off. They want to take the aim assist off of the controllers. We're OP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's crazy, I just crazy, want to point man. out that I was using an Xbox 360 controller. Still the best Ooh. controller ever made. Yeah, Gary, cover your ears. My buddy was using a Mad Cats 360 controller. <laughs> Mad we were Cats. Shitting on people. Just Mad shitting Cats. on them. We so. were rolling, man. We were rolling hard. It was fun. Oh, shit.
It was very, fun, and it is an issue. Not liking that shit. It is an issue. It's a topic of hot debate, and something definitely needs to happen with it. But I'm not going to offer any solution until then. I'm just going to use whatever and don't apologize. So yeah, yeah. I mean that that video I said to you earlier, Briar. But you know, you you saying that playing the the greatest version of Destiny has made you more excited to play the 30 frames per second. You know. <laughs> old car that's sitting on the uh, the driveway that just that reeked to me of a guy coming back from a bachelor party in vegas <laughs> and talking to his wife you know how was the trip and you're like it was nice but you know it's nice to be home too sometimes you know <laughs> it's you know it's it's good to be sitting here i don't need to be at the the strip bar at 9 a.m you know having the all you can eat buffet and gambling all night drinking and having fun with my buddies it's it's nice to be at home where's the yard let me cut it that's kind of that's the tone that you set, I think. What a fucking asshole this guy is. <laughs> Let's play this fucking guy. Holy shit. You're basically saying all the hookers in Vegas make you miss home. Eventually make you appreciate home more. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, he, he's saying that being a good husband and a good man sucks. You mm. need to be out there dropping 20s on uh, age-ridden strippers. <laughs> there were a lot of hookers per second over there in Vegas. I'm not gonna lie. Two <laughs> hundred was it? 200. They, they, they said 200. unlimited. No. Yeah, they did they say unlimited. unlimited. That, uh, they said unlimited. But I only got two hundred hookers per second. It was uh, a little disappointing, if I must be honest. Terrible. My monitor can only handle sixty. So, damn. <laughs> I gotta say though, I, think- I mean, I I am really looking forward to Tuesday. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, but I think we should start getting to our other topics because it is. This could go all night. <laughs> we this, got this five more go topics and we got an hour and fifteen minutes to blow through them. <laughs> I think I think we're capable. I think we can do it. If anyone can, this crack team can. So let's let's go for it. All right. So right in. who's next? So talking about all this, you know, <clears throat> PC and console stuff like that. How would you feel about if like Sony and Microsoft? did crossplay because they've actually been talking about it recently and Microsoft has confirmed that they're actually talking to Sony about it. Um, what do you guys think about that? You think Sony's going to agree? Like, of course, in my opinion, Microsoft's talking to them about it because, you know, it would definitely benefit them more, but right. in the long run, it would benefit all the gamers more than, than anything, you know, but what yeah. do you guys think? Uh, Sony's going to jump on that. Or do you think they're going to give them the cold shoulder? I don't know. I, I feel like Microsoft's been talking about this for years, and Sony's been giving yep. them the heart cold shoulder. Like Microsoft's been on this bandwagon. Yeah, we're in second place. Let's do uh, crossplay. It'll be fun. <laughs> and Sony's been like, Yeah, no. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's kind of bullshit. N- <laughs> Nintendo is actually uh, on this crossplay bandwagon as well with games like Minecraft, and it's you know crossplay with PC and Xbox. And um, after you know, we we've had this debate many times. We talked about this for at least the last 18 months, it feels. I don't think Sony will do it. I don't think Sony... Briar made it very clear to me. And once you hear the truth, it's like the Bible. You just know it's true. He said <laughs> that um, Sony had no real reason to uh, to go forward with this kind of uh, junction uh, with Microsoft or Nintendo because they are too far in the lead and it would uh, diminish the possibility of potential gamers buying their console. The people playing on the Xbox can play against their friends on the PlayStation 4, it negates the need for them to buy a PlayStation 4. And then at the end of the day, it's all about business. And, you know, and I think that Sony is a company that's all about overhead and revenue. And they've shown that for many, many years, especially when it comes to their video games uh, uh, department or what they do in, in their gaming, gaming hardware and sales. I don't think that they're, they're, they have any motivation to move forward with any kind of cross-play with Nintendo or with Microsoft at this point. Well, it's really all Sony's got going for them right now is their gaming platform. No one's buying that, their that TVs. Is, no one's buying their the other thing. shit. Yeah, you know, and like, it's it's really unfortunate because I think it, it'd obviously be like a super beneficial thing, right? Like, if you could finally, oh, what what game are you? What console are you getting the game for? It would completely squash that. You know what I mean? But like, Microsoft, yeah, I mean- Microsoft, like. It sucks that they're coming to Sony about it and willing to work with them about it. And I agree with you. I feel like they're probably going to give them the cold shoulder on it. And they're going to give them that hard D and tell them to get the hell out of here. Hard there's, D. There's, yeah. there's really no reason for them to do it. And I understand your your perspective because I feel the same way. I think it'd be awesome 
you know, to turn on my Xbox and play, you know, my sons. I got Mortal Kombat X in here on my Xbox. They have it on their PlayStation 4. To be able to play against them, you know, cross-platform would be amazing to me. It'd be really cool. But at the end of the day, these console developers, these companies have no real... Sony has no real reason to do this uh, with Microsoft. And if the tables were turned, if Microsoft was ahead 30 million plus, there'd be no way they would even be considering something like this because they want to hold on to that lead. They want to do whatever it took that got them that lead and continue on that path versus potentially change it and stop their growth. And I think that's what would happen. You know, if you got people with the Xbox and they've been waiting all year to get a PlayStation for Christmas and then all of a sudden they can play against people on the PlayStation, they don't need to buy or a PlayStation Or if they can play Christmas like, time. you know, co-op games with their friends, you know, they, you know, we've got, we've got multiple people probably in chat right now. I see them in chat right now that I hardly ever play with because they're on the Xbox. If I could just, boot up my PlayStation, they could boot up their Xbox, and we could play Destiny together. We could raid together. God, I'd be so happy if we could do that because I wouldn't have to just grind another character on the Xbox just so I could play with, you know, those people. You know what I mean? It's like, God, it would be so it would be so good if that happened, but I just don't I see... Mean, a bit of perspe- so a bit of perspective on it, though. I mean, it's not just PlayStation. You know, so you look at Sony and say, oh, Sony's ahead, Sony's ahead. Exclusively in the console space, absolutely, I, I agree. You know, they are outselling Xbox two to one. But you've got to think of Microsoft or Windows as a platform. Microsoft have got that in their back pocket. You know, Microsoft aren't this, like, losing puppy that we should be pitying and thinking, oh, why can't they work? You know, games like PUBG, Dota, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, none of them are on PlayStation. They're sitting on a Microsoft platform. That's what they're being played on. You know, these are they're getting played on a Microsoft platform, but they're not getting sold by Microsoft, right? They're they're on a they're on a Valve platform, right? I mean, yeah, you play them in Windows, but if you had an if you had a chance to fucking use any other operating system in the world, you'd (laughs) you'd gladly take it and still keep Steam. You'd gladly you'd be so happy, right? Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying that there's a platform that's owned by Microsoft that all of this is available on. You know, Sony. I guess inadvertently because they've got such a controlled ecosystem, make revenue on the games there. But I, I don't know the intricacies of the business. I don't know if Valve has to have a backhander into Microsoft to operate on their platform oh. uh, or on their thing. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where the, the money goes. But I'm just making the point that PC, which is a Microsoft platform, or Windows, which is a Microsoft platform, it, it's not the, the the kind of you know the the uh, the lame duck of gaming. They've still got a predominant large part of the market that that only play PC. It's a, it's they much, say with their ga- oh, go ahead, Brian. It's much more murky waters over on the PC. Is yeah, you're playing on Windows, but you're basically, as far as the gamers concerned, it's just the shit that makes your computer start up, so you can go to Steam and download a game, or go to Blizzard and yep. download a game, and then just take over the full screen of the game and not have to worry about it being Windows anymore. If you know, if the Steam Box idea had taken off, you know, or if Linux was easier to use, or if Mac could game. I think people would gladly abandon <laughs> Windows because it's been so shitty for so long. It's a bad experience. Yeah. Windows is a bad experience. I'm not going to fucking, like, you know, it's just, like, uh, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love Windows, but I don't use it for as many things as you do. Like, you do a lot of content creation, so I can understand the frustration with, with Windows for sure. Gary, do you think it's a possibility that Sony would, you know, fold to the pressure? I know there's a lot of gamers who play PlayStation who've, appealed to Sony to do certain things for years, uh, stuff like l- allowing us to change our PSN names and even doing this cross-play uh, idea. Do you think that Sony is is maybe thinking about it, possibly doing it with with Xbox or Nintendo, or do you think there's really no way that they, they would go forward with it? I think that if it is ever done, it will be done on a game-by-game basis. I don't think it will be an open architecture. I think it would be it makes sense for us from a commercial perspective to open up this game to crossplay. There are um, games that do it now, right? Final Fantasy fourteen is crossplay on PlayStation. Is yeah, it? with PC. It is yeah. with Microsoft. Well, with a PC, so it's with yeah. Microsoft. And Rocket platform. League is that Rocket, Rocket League is too, on yeah. PS4 Rocket well? League's crossplay, and they're talking. Microsoft's talking about crossplaying with Nintendo on yeah. Rocket League. So that's. That's pretty Mine. huge, man. Rocket League is huge. Like that is a very big game, and mm-hmm. people don't really seem to have many complaints about the crossplay in that. But like, do you guys think this that like crossplay needs to happen for both the success of um, Microsoft or maybe even like the future? Well, if they're gonna do it. They gotta remove gaming? aim assist from controllers. I mean, it's overpowered <laughs> in Rocket League. 
the hell? I think that, do you know what, though? That, looping back onto that topic, I don't care how much aim assist you've got in your controller. I'm still going to destroy you if I'm using a mouse and keyboard. Let's be honest. It's, you know... I think it's bad mouse and cable players that are complaining we'll find about that. out. Ooh, all I know is I've been reading like the Bungie forums. I've been reading the Bungie forums and Reddit, and people are pretty upset about controllers having aim assist on the PC. I'm just saying, you guys talk all this big game the whole time, you know what I mean? Like, oh, we'll destroy you guys. We show up on the scene, and all I see is a bunch of bruised butts going oh, home. Oh, shit, man. Wilson. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You walk around a controller slowly and you watch them telegraph around as they're hitting their stick slowly. It's just it's just a, a primitive form of controlling a game. I'll give you that. I'm going to get a holster for this thing. <laughs> we can get him, Wilson. I, I don't think that uh, crossplay is paramount for the success of Microsoft. I don't think I, I think it's probably another gimmick they could use similar to their uh, backwards compatibility initiative. I think it's something that makes them look good to the, the gamers, but I don't think it will really change the dynamic of their success. I think Microsoft, in order for them to have sustained success, they need to have sustainable exclusives. They need to have more games that people can only play on their consoles. That's the one area that Microsoft falls behind on. They do have you know, a few notable titles, but not very many. And when you see what's going on with their competition, there's game after game after game after game being released that you can only play on PlayStation that's the issue that Microsoft is having. If they have more meaningful exclusives, better crafted games, I think that's what will be paramount to their success. And I think stuff like this cross-play initiative and you know, being able to play backwards compatible games really is a non-factor. Well, they've said that it's not about the platform, it's about the software before, you know what I mean? So that was kind of like their, what was that, that Microsoft Play Anywhere program? Or whatever you know that's it's pretty huge too but like you know they, they definitely stated that you know they want to focus on the software they need to <laughs> and then they release the one x but hey i'm just saying <laughs> all right do we man we've got to talk about the one x sometime because i give like the smallest shit about that thing now but that's a, a topic for another week the what? my wife asked me the the the, 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 the what? one x the uh, the Xbox One X. I, oh, I oh. like. I give I zero it. craps about that. That's a, a topic for another. Still thinking Scorpio. He's still <laughs> she asked me today, was I going to pre-order? I said that thing is pretty much already sold out, and there's no real reason for me to get it right now. So maybe in the future. Yeah, that's kind of my problem with computer. it right now. I mean, I want one, but I I want one after they release a bunch of fucking badass games for, for it. Yeah, yeah. And they I, showed I, Tomb Raider, and I'm not cool, I'm but... not talking about just like uh, like. You know, pro versions of current games mm -hmm. that are out. Uh, I really want to. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's next? What else we got for topics this week? Uh, we got a. Uh, is Twitch going to topple the internet starting with YouTube? So I'm sure if you guys have heard lately, YouTube's been kind of dropping the ball a little bit, not I really kind of been taking care of their family. You know what I mean? Like, seems like they're kind of pushing everybody away or trying to get them to go to a different platform. And it seems like Twitch. Could potentially be the the one all end all content creator platform you know like where youtube says no we're not going to do that twitch says yeah man we'll do it you know uh they seem twitch really seems to be picking up all the slack that youtube's leaving behind and i don't know how you guys feel about that or if you guys feel the same way i'm sure briar and uh beastly will have some pretty big thoughts on youtube currently i i think that it's definitely a, a major factor in the future of YouTube. Um, YouTube, I'm Inner Black Ninja. I'm heavily considering my YouTube diss track. I've actually been really thinking about it. Um, they have been banning and marking tons and tons of videos as, you know, not advertiser friendly. Is that still um, happening to you? Yeah, it's still. I mean, I've gotten a ton of emails at this point. They've reversed, you know, quite a few of them. But there are some that they came back and manually reviewed and still said. It's not ever. I was like, what? How the hell is this possible? So it's infuriating. You know, all the effort you, you put into something like a YouTube channel to have them, you know. Have you uh, picked up on a pattern yet? No, there is. Briar, there isn't. You know, I, I heard that, you know, uh, all capital letters and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't been any kind well, of there, pattern. For me. So from what I what I read is that there's some things that trigger it, right? Is uh, all caps in the title could, tr could trigger it. Um, uh, violent images in the thumbnail, uh, any kind of reference to guns, weapons, uh, killing, death, any any kind of reference like that in the title can trigger it, right? It'll it'll get it up for review. And then once it's up for review, then you're stuck in the review process, right? 
So what I've been trying to do lately, and it's been pretty successful so far, is trying to not trigger it. <laughs> you know, like I don't put pictures of weapons in the thumbnail unless, you know, it's kind of like a, a real sci-fi kind of looking thing. I don't, I don't put references to weapons, to guns, to murder, to kill, you know, anything like that. I try to, I try to stay away from the trigger words in the, in the title. And uh, so far it's been working pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm more than likely going to do that now. I got my teleprompter, so, you know, I can really put a lot of deliberate thought into my words, my titles, and, and my thumbnails. Hopefully mm -hmm. it, it works better for me in the future. But on to the topic, I think Twitch is the place that a lot of people are going to. You yeah. know, I said, I said it myself, Briar, you're already there, that Twitch is, is looking more and more like the place for me. Uh, they, they have much more freedom. You're able to do a lot more on, on, the, uh, on Twitch versus YouTube. And, you know, you don't feel penalized by, you know, for creating content that you think is quality content. And so I think I've heard lots of YouTubers in the last two weeks. I've watched tons of videos of YouTubers in the last two weeks who said, this is my last video. I'm going over to Vidme. I'm going over to Twitch. So I, I think, honestly, YouTube is killing itself slowly at this point. But do you think that YouTube has the monopoly, something that can't be toppled? Because the they, point... I'll tell you what they have. Yeah. And this is why... You know, as a content creator, if you want to make videos, they, which is I highly doubt ever going to take over, they have Google. They have the Google search, the Google uh -huh. search algorithm. YouTube is more than just a video hosting service. It's the world's second largest search engine behind Google. So if you want to put up a video that you want to see get viewed, you want Google to, search to, to, yeah. mm -hmm. to take that. And they clearly put a priority into YouTube videos over any other video delivery service right so if i want if i want to if i'm super uh excited about mice and i want to do a review of a mouse i'm going to say i want to do a review of this logitech mx master mouse and i put it on twitch and i put it on youtube guess which video is going to get way more views yeah the YouTube, youtube video because google is serving that youtube video up it is great, but great like point. i i see a lot of i've i've talked to a lot of people about this and they're like i don't watch non-live content on twitch i come to twitch for live content mm -hmm. but if they keep dropping the ball like this a lot of people aren't going to have any other choice so like if you want to see your person's videos and they only start uploading them to twitch i think naturally like you're not going to get the amount of views the amount of numbers and stuff like that that you normally would on youtube but eventually a majority of the people that actually want to see your videos would go there to see them like if i knew that that was the only place that i could um, you know, watch the videos that I like to watch on YouTube that are now on Twitch. Like that's where I'm gonna go. This, you know, this... and Twitch feels like they want people. YouTube feels like they're fucking up on purpose just to push people away. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it does feel like this. But this is one uh, aspect of this conundrum you have to think about. There are two types of people on YouTube: they're content creators and they're content consumers. And a lot of content creators are pissed off. The consumers really aren't. The consumers don't have to contend with these issues. All they do is search, find a video, and watch it. So those people have really no no reason to go anywhere else. A lot of them don't even hear about the issues that people who are creating content are going through, uh, for the most part. And you can always go there to find another video on the same on the same topic over and over again. So until it branches out to the people who are watching the content, to the people who are looking for content, it's really YouTube has it. You know, as many of us get pissed off about YouTube's algorithm, and this draconian, uh, you know system that they have in place we're going to leave but we're like you know drops in the bucket compared to what's what remains on youtube and those people who are consuming content versus the ones who are creating it outnumber us a, a million a billion to one yeah so. yeah yeah like a lot of people though as a consumer though like they don't have a problem with it until they can't consume anymore and mm -hmm. like i know that i that a lot of us like especially a lot of people in the chat were a rare breed of youtube consumer where like yeah, we like to get the information, but like we also like the personality behind the video and the person that's actually there's that a bond comes there. later though, right? Like yeah, you got to get that initial view. You, like when you, yeah. especially as a small content creator, when you're like, you know, when you've got zero subscribers, you're putting your first videos up. Like you literally get zero views on those first videos for days, maybe mm -hmm. weeks, <laughs> right? You know, once you have a hundred subscribers, maybe there's like this ten percent rule on YouTube. Ten percent, right? yeah. 
when you have 100 subscribers, you can expect 10 views on a, on a video. When you have 1,000 subscribers, you can expect 100 views. When you have 10,000, you can expect 1,000. Like, it, it 10% rule. Uh, and it's weird like that, but it's super hard. Like, imagine if you were trying to build that audience up on Twitch by doing VODs. It's not going to happen. You know, it's not the, the audience isn't there on Twitch. And on Vidme, I look at their top videos of the day over on Vidme. It's they nothing. got 100 views. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really views. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the trending videos, bro. They have like 13, uh, uh, 500 views. Yeah. I've seen the highest one that had like 1,100 views. It's yeah, I crazy. started posting my videos over to Vidme and to uh, Twitch. And I actually like doing it on Twitch, so I'm going to keep doing it on Twitch because I feel like it's kind of supplemental com content, you know? Uh, if people like me on Twitch, it's like another avenue that they could check out. Uh, but Vidme is it's kind of rough over there. There's just not enough people watching them, you know? I probably mm -hmm. still keep posting. Yeah, I guess like if YouTube completely um, sort of excommunicated gaming from their repertoire, I don't yeah. think it's going to massively hurt them. If no, I'm completely it's not. They're not, they're not focused on it. They are focused on no. having, you know, the Jimmy Fallon's of the world and the, you know, like the, they're focused on YouTube TV where they're actually taking live TV and broadcasting it on YouTube. And they're focused on YouTube Red where they're, people are creating like real original programming uh, you know, Netflix style or Amazon style for YouTube. Their their focus is not on what built YouTube up. Their focus is in the future, I believe, on trying to become much more like a Netflix or type of model or a network type of model. Yeah, and I mean, from a commercial perspective, again, I'm going to take the um, the cold, heartless view of the corporation here. You can't blame them for what they're doing. I mean, if you're a legitimate business who's trying to attract advertisers, if there's even... They flag 10,000 videos inappropriately, but they pick 10 of those that are racist, you know, xenophobic, aggressive videos that, that should be flagged properly. If you have to get 10,000 ones that are borderline to hit the 10 that are going to be offensive, you know, you, like you said, Jimmy Fallon's never going to put out something that's going to get flagged for being racist, offensive videos, and you're going right. to get 15 million views in 24 hours. So why would you, why would you not focus oh, you, on those you, guys? You can totally see why they're doing it. Um, but there are people who, you know, their audience was built by the people watching content creators. You know, traditionally, I don't know if that if that audience will move on or if it's it's going to get bored with the YouTube style of thing and. Maybe it will emigrate over to Twitch in a more live streaming kind of service. Twitch is a lot of fun. Live streaming is a ton of fun. Uh, it's a hell of a lot. It's a different kind of work, I would say, than making YouTube videos. It's not, you know, Twitch can feel like work. It can feel like just playing video games. Uh, but it's not like you're just sitting there, like, you know, writing a script and then editing a video for, you might, you might spend eight hours making a seven, seven minute video. You know, and that type of work doesn't really exist in Twitch. There is like the, you know, getting your scenes ready and getting your, getting your music ready. There is, there is definitely back end work on Twitch for sure, but the bulk of the work on Twitch is playing video games and talking to your audience. Right. Easy work, man. It's it's so much this compared to it's, you know rendering videos and doing all that editing. Editing. It's I different, mean, right? Beasley, and I, I yeah. think you should be careful about saying it's easy until you try to do an eight-hour block of stream with a Fuck needy that. chat. <laughs> with, with a needy chat. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. we love you guys. I guess that there's, there's probably another <laughs> perspective on it that that would help us transition into the um the the fourth topic that we've got, and that's that you say YouTube was built up um by the community members that is uh, kind of being ostracized or the, the ones that are feeling the, the the pinch most now. But do you think that YouTube has, um, I guess, been sullied in a way when you've got people like Keemstar and Drama Alert and people that go on there specifically to put controversial topics on there that have ruined the platform for the others? I guess Patreon at the moment is in danger of that very much. So, a lot, And this is kind of our next topic, which uh, was suggested by one of our um, viewers who, who posted a comment on the, the video. So Raymond Rodriguez was his name. And the comment was Patreon, the good, the bad, and the slutty. And I thought that was just such a good topic. That we, <laughs> we had to get Nailed into it. Nailed it. Um, and Patreon's a great idea to let creative individuals um, get funded. You know, it, it, kind of like a GoFundMe for, for um, enterprise. Uh, very different to Kickstarter in that it's a consistent funding, not a, a single goal. But there's a, a huge influx of cosplayers or just 
glamour models that are using Patreon now as a means to just, you know, send semi-nude or fully nude pictures for uh, registered subscribers. So it's effectively becoming a website for cam girls, and Patreon don't seem to be doing anything to curate this, and it's an ever-growing percentage. I mean, I know cam girls got to make money is, too, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. My, my <laughs> they got to pay the bills. Effective. College ain't free. Negatively. Those boobs ain't gonna feed themselves. <laughs> But do we think it damages the platform in the same way that YouTube's now been damaged and YouTube's obviously taken action over it? Are we concerned about the future of Patreon? What do we think about Patreon as it stands now and what it stands to be in the future as a result? Well, I don't, I don't think – I don't know if we can you know, say that Patreon is actually the issue, the company itself, because people are going to support what they like. You know, it, Sometimes it might be a cam girl who plays Dota who wears skimpy clothes and you can see her areola. Some people will say, hey, I'll pay $5 a month to see that shit. Uh, and Patreon is, I don't think that they're the moral police. I think that they are a company which allows consumers to pay or to support content creators that they enjoy their content. Uh, we saw this happen with Twitch, but Twitch had rules and guidelines. And they started to ban these girls, these cam girls who were showing their tacos, you know, accidentally on Twitch. And, and so since they were violating Twitch's guidelines, they got actually banned and removed from the service. But I don't think, at least I haven't heard, that Patreon has these types of rules. And if they did, then maybe it would be up on them to uh, you know, act or remove these types of accounts. But for the most part, if there's a cam girl and you're, you're a guy who wants to give her $10 a month and, and you know she shows you how big her boobs are accidentally, because it's always an accident, hell, pay her the 10 bucks and support it. Yeah, I think we're... <laughs> As long as as long as everyone has money, they're gonna find a way to spend it. Whether in like you said, they're gonna support what they love and enjoy. In my opinion, Oops. I I like Patreon. I don't know, like I guess like if you if you have a problem with Patreon or like you're a content creator and you don't want to do Patreon, like I guess the next best thing would be to like have like what like a merch merch store or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't really see a problem with with either one. Like. I've definitely supported some Patreons before, like with some content creators, and like it's in a really sticky situation right now. <laughs> I'm I mean, sure it is. I mean, like they, this is what they do for a living, and you know, if I can contribute, you know, even if it's just a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, I mean, it, it's not really a big deal. I see where you're getting at, though, with the good, bad, and the slutty. Um, I mean, there's other websites where they can do that. You know what I mean? Like, I think, like, legitimately, a lot of the people that are doing that kind of stuff, like, they do like video games, but they also, like, know how to kind of work the system. And they know that a lot yeah. of, you know, nerdy, potentially single men are watching, craving for attention and things like that. But I don't <laughs> know, man. My wife calls me nerdy and potentially single. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Shit. Well said, right on time too, man. That's awesome. Damn. I That's guess awesome. that it's it's more about okay, Patreon's not got the best search or indexing feature at the moment. If you try to find someone, unless you know their name, it's really difficult to find or browse for potential people that you might be interested on Patreon. Uh, I've tried it on the mobile and, and the desktop site. And the more people that you get in that have literally no um, affiliation to the site, they're not really content creators, they're not artists, they're not creative individuals, they're just promiscuous um which is fine you know like i said you know if you want to do that you do that but like you said wilson there's platforms that that are specifically designed for that whereas patreons now being you know like i said the influx of them if you look at the newest patrons that are added each day eight out of ten of them are going to be these sorts of channels which are just you know it, it, it tends to be i think asia's caught on to it because there's a lot of asian women that are now doing this mm -hmm. um and it's, it's just really making it difficult to find legitimate people that are trying to use Patreon unless they've already got a platform somewhere else that are funneling traffic to their patron. It's it's difficult to to get noticed and get the support that you need. I, I think that you're probably you're possibly seeing this the wrong way, Gary. You know, these these girls, cam girls, whatever you want to call them, uh, these slutty patrons. For me, at least the people who are supporting them. I don't think they'd be supporting another patron if these girls weren't, you know, around for them to support. I don't think that taking money away from these, I think that they have a particular audience. And I don't think if they disappear from Patreon, this audience would go and, you know, support another Patreon user who is building robotic cars. 
you know, everyone has their own particular audience. And I think there's an audience for this, whether it's morally right, that's another argument, but it's business. Patreon is doing what it's, it's set out to do, which is allowing people who create content, whether we like the content or not, it's still content. These girls might be floozies wearing shoestrings for an entire outfit. But they're sitting there. They're sitting there playing Floozies. a video game. Yeah, I'm old, man. It's a no, 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 I think I think you make a good point, man. Like, and, and I I don't think it's more of like they're taking advantage of people on Patreon because you make a valid point. Like, people are gonna find a way to give those girls money. I think yeah, it's much easier. I think it's much easier to set up a Patreon and get more exposure by saying Patreon is a word that a lot of people know. Like, I know some people haven't heard of Patreon. It's basically just a way to support somebody doing anything that they want to mm -hmm. do. It's just your way of supporting them, sending them money. Um, I feel like it's just a platform for them to get their name out there more as, I mean, because like, look at it this way. Would you rather set up a Patreon or would you rather just set up a website and randomly email people? Hey, send me, PayPal me a hundred bucks and we'll chat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot easier to get your name out there on Patreon and Patreon is probably got some sort of algorithm with Google, you know what I mean? Like, or Yahoo or all the other search engines. And I think it's just m much more exposure for these people. But I think you nailed it on the head, man. These people are going to send those kind of people money, regardless of what platform Every, they're on. Everyone they're, has an audience. Yeah. And that and audience they, is there not, for that. Yeah. They're there for exactly. They're there for what they want to see. And that's kind of the point of Patreon. I think it's kind of hard to take money from other people because people are going there for what they want to go there for. I mean, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, if you want to see a girl with TNA playing, you know, League of Legends and talking like her brain's the size of a acorn and you want to give her five dollars a month or ten dollars a month and she disappears, you're not going to go and watch a guy build Transformers and give him that five. You're going to find another girl who does that. You know, this, that's the world we live in. People enjoy that kind of stuff for human beings is human nature. And like I said, it might be morally corrupt, <laughs> you know, to, to yeah. see this kind of stuff on Patreon. But Patreon ultimately is a service which allows people to pay for content. And whether we like the content or not, it's content to someone. They're creating something for someone and they're uploading it to video sharing sites, YouTube, uh, Twitch, wherever they might be sharing it. And Patreon is really doing what it's supposed to be doing here. Brian, I mean, like, how do you feel, Brian? You haven't said anything about this. I have literally given Patreon like no thought in my life. <laughs> so I'm like listening to you guys talk about it and learning, basically. I, I agree with a lot of what you said, Beastly. It's like it seems to me that if if people want it and people are willing to provide it, and this is a pretty good way of going about it. And that, yeah. that goes for, you know, the sexy stuff and it goes for anything. You know, if uh yeah. you know, if if somebody's doing something that you really want in the future and you know you, you want to support it it seems like a good way to go i know there's like a stigma about it right now but i don't know it seems like a fair transaction to me <laughs> I, mean, I feel like there's bigger problems out there with like kickstarter and yeah um gofundme what was the one the, the Fuck fucking kickstarter kick i tried to get my vr goggles on kickstarter and they said <laughs> <laughs> they literally sent me an email that said fuck you <laughs> bold underline I that's two iphones and some styrofoam <laughs> asshole <laughs> they uh they, oh. well, what was the one kickstarter where the guy did like a salad did you guys remember that the salad <laughs> kickstarter yeah. and the guy made like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. yeah he's like if you pledge this much i'll live stream making the salad <laughs> the, the fruit salad that's what it was it was fruit salad or if you pledge this much I'll go somewhere and you guys can come visit me and we'll all eat the fruit salad together and all that stuff. And this shit went viral. And I feel like, like I said, people are going to donate to what they want to donate to, but I feel like shit like that is more taking the attention away from like actual ideas, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, things that could potentially benefit people or taking the light away from yet another cash grab. You know people, I mean? are, people are attracted to ridiculousness, Wilson. People are, you know, yeah. It, 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 it's a good it's idea for everybody it. to, yeah, for people to be just, you know, on point and thinking about progression in life. But a lot of people get, you know, drained by the norm. And when they see something outlandish, they want to be a part of it. They want to support it. They want to, you know, touch it. They want to hear it. And that's what happens with these kind of stories. People just want something that falls outside the realm of normalcy and just makes things grandiose. 
and crazy. And and sometimes people have, you know, some people have what they consider boring lives. And to be able to be on the internet and be a part of something crazy like that, a lot of people will jump at that opportunity. That's a good point. Okay, I think we've settled it then. Cam girls win. Absolutely. They're here so to you, stay, Gary. Ariel. They're here to stay. <laughs> I remember, uh, is it more when I first joined Twitch and I was kind of familiarizing myself with it, is uh, there was a lot of talk about how you know, the, the cam girls would get on Twitch and like, because they were showing, you know, cleavage and stuff, they'd immediately get a bunch of views and a bunch of subs. And, uh, that like real quick, it was explained that actually they're not even like looking at for the same audience you are. Right. It's like the people who are watching a cam girl are not even, they're, they're not at all interested in what you're doing. <laughs> you know, like it's just because like it's so it's very it's a weird thing, like thinking about it. But it, the people who are upset that, you know, cam girls are getting a bunch of money on Patreon, they think they're sucking up all the Patreon money. That's not what's happening. <laughs> they're not no. they're not taking your money. That mm -hmm. money was going to porn in some way or fashion. Yeah. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Yeah, like when I show up to a Twitch just, chat. This is just the vector it's headed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I show up to a Twitch chat, it's very much for the community. How is everyone doing today? What's everyone been up to? What's everyone doing in the world of Destiny? Yeah. Those kind of things, those people are showing up, and they're not really there for the chat, the community. No, they're, there. they're there for their own needs. Yeah, I love the, uh, <laughs> the layers, you know, like the, the layers of money laundering and filtration of the pornography industry. You know, it was, it was going to yeah. hit street level at some point. We're just, you know, this is the porn a different industry has point. been savaged by, you know, free porn on the internet. That's yeah. fascinating. I was watching a uh, Joe Rogan podcast about it. Uh, he said it must have been two weeks ago. He had a uh, he had a guest on who did a documentary about how um, the advent of you porn had basically savaged the pornography industry. And while it sounds like, you know, this is a, a shady, you know, kind of thing to be talking and learning about, it was actually fascinating how this one guy came in and basically created a website and just, like, just wiped out an industry. <laughs> like, a complete industry is just gone now. Like, Man, damn, it's pretty it's fascinating. An interesting, it's an interesting topic. Do you ever catch any of, I don't know if you see him in the States, but Louis Theroux does, like, documentaries i don't know if you've ever seen i any think of his stuff. that might have been the guy who was on the joe rogan podcast louis through british guy um, yeah you know, yeah he, he went to um this is where he got his source material so he did louis through does porn um he didn't actually do it he went and spent a week going through the industry and he did this in the early 2000s and went around and saw the lifestyle they live and saw what they did and how they lived and he went back 10 years later after the advent of it and saw like the destitution like you say it was just like <laughs> You know what had happened and the lives people were living post on from it. Yeah, it was fascinating stuff. Yeah, I'd uh, yeah. I'd advise all our viewers to do all your own individual research tonight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> was, there's no way to talk about this subject without giggling for me. It was just I'm too uh, immature. <laughs> listen, too Gary, immature. <laughs> I, I, I've done enough research for a lifetime. Um, <laughs> all right, so the next topic is one that really touches me, and probably. My other host as well on some level. I know, Briar, you're one of the guys that feels the same way. Are we lying to ourselves about getting back to our video game backlogs? Yeah, totally. This is a, this is a, <laughs> this is a real issue for me, okay? It seems that more often than not, we've all said we we're going to go back to our video game gems only to go out and buy the latest and greatest new video games. I have a ton of games I haven't played. You know, I have so many games I probably put five or ten minutes into. But... I'm constantly being buried under an avalanche of new content. Uh, just recently, within the last couple of days, I bought new PlayStation VR games. I bought a new adventure game. I bought Sonic Mania. Um, I got Uncharted, the new one, and haven't played it at all. I bought some new games. I got um, Gears of War 4 for my Xbox One because I hadn't played that. But there's literally 50 to 70 games I still haven't played. And why I constantly say it to you guys, the viewers, to my friends and co-hosts, I'm going to get back to this game. It seems impossible to ever do it because there's new things like Destiny 2 coming. Yeah. I know once that game comes out, Uncharted, I haven't even played it yet. I know that's going to fall further and further into the backlog. <laughs> I'm really enjoying Sonic Mania. It's the best Sonic I've probably played since Sonic CD. 
It's incredible. That on the Switch? Can I buy that on the it's Switch? On, yeah, it's on the Switch for 20 bucks, and it's on PS4 and Xbox One for the same price. Uh, and the Switch is 1080p. PS4 Pro is a 4K rendition of the game, Brian. And I got it on PS4 because, of course, my wife game shares with me. But it 4K is... 4K version of an 8-bit game? It looks incredible, game? Brian. Okay. It looks incredible. Uh, it was actually crafted by... I don't know the guy's name, but he was the one who was doing all the mods to the old Sonic games on, on PC and making his own versions of Sonic games... And they noticed the guy's talent, and they uh, commissioned him to actually make Sonic Mania. Cool. And this actually has lots of the original Sonic stages with, you know, additions to the level. You can now go down and see what's really on the ground level. All the music has been redone and revamped. It is an amazing game. I've been playing the hell out of that. And it's one of those things where if you got five or ten minutes, you just jump in and go. And I want to I want to hear a Beastly Gamer review of a game where he's like, this game is shit. <laughs> uh, this game is fucking <laughs> terrible because well, every time I hear him talking about watch, game, he's like, watch, "It's watch, fucking watch, amazing." <laughs> watch my qu Quantum Break. Quantum review. Break. Okay, check that one out <laughs> because that really let me down. But the question is, how can a person seriously move? And you guys let us know in the comments too, here on Twitch and on YouTube. How can a gamer with a ton of games? that he's never played, he or she's never played, who wants to keep up with the Joneses, who wants to have the newest games, who's excited about what's coming down the pipeline from developers. I'll how tell you how, Beasley. You got to ditch your family, ditch your job. You know, like, you got to prioritize. If you want to play every fucking new release that comes out, there's not enough time in the day. Why are you buying all this shit, Beasley? That's my question. Like, why are you buying all these games that you know you don't have time to play? <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> It's real. It's it's crazy, and and you know the the voice of reason. She'll walk into the studio, and she's like, "Why'd you just buy those three games?" I was like, "Because they're awesome," and I want. I've heard some great things about it, and she says, "You know, you're not going to play it," and I'm like, "Damn it, she's right." And all you can do is look away, and kind of smile at you know your your wall or your poster of yourself, yeah, and hope hope that she walks out of the room. But I really want to get back to some of these games. I really want to have the time for it, but I feel like if I you know, man, you got a family, you got a job, you don't have time. You don't have the time anymore. I mean, honestly, Brian, I could. I could have time, but it's really, in my opinion, one or the other. Either I forego future games that are being dropped and released, the ones I'm excited about after yeah. Destiny 2 because I'm buying that, but or I forego the thought of my backlog and let those games die somewhere. And, and you, only Well, I mean, eventually you got you to gotta decide what game you're going to play, right? Like, you know... I'll tell you what I do. I, I mean, I've learned my lesson because I was in the same boat you were in two years ago. I mean, famously, I, I bought games. Far Cry 4 and it was sitting in the <laughs> saran wrap for, for like two oh, years. Yeah. You know, like, so like yeah, I, awesome. eventually I said, okay, I'm going to stop buying games until I actually have time to play it. It's not when it comes out that I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it when I have time to play it. And uh, I got to say, Steam is awesome for this because I could just yeah. go on to Steam and Oh, okay. I, I never did get around to playing Near Automata. I'd really like to play that. Or I, you know, I I never got to play uh, the 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 DLC for Wolfenstein. I'd love to play that. Uh, that's really nice because I I can actually like just download the game when I have time to play it, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You're playing that game 15 minutes later. But the, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not 21 anymore. I don't have like unlimited fucking free time that I could spend gaming. You know, you're right, bro. That was going mean... to be my point was that, you know, when I was a lot younger, I was at GameStop during their prime when they were doing a midnight release for every single game. Yeah. I remember there was like a two year period where every game had like a midnight release and I was knocking them out. I was achievement hunting, getting all the achievements and you just get older and you don't have the time. And, you know, some of us have become parents. I think I'm the only one that's not a parent here, actually, yeah. but. And I still don't dream have alive, time. Wilson. <laughs> I still, <laughs> I still don't have time, so I don't know how. Lucky you guys, bastard. You know, but like, as far as like lying to myself about my backlog of games on console, no. Briar, you had mentioned that like you know Steam is really good for helping you get through your backlog. I actually have the exact opposite experience of Steam is an enabler for me with this Steam because sales they put, are bad. <laughs> you nailed it, dude. Steam sales. I'll be like, why would I not buy? fucking grand theft auto for 15 dollars yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like that's an amazing game oh wait i can buy them buy... all for 25 oh I, i'd yeah, love yeah. to play through me. the series that's only fucking four months of actual gameplay <laughs> yeah I, I agree with wilson there bro because you know i'm not even a pc gamer yeah. but when that steam the last steam seller went on i bought six or seven games i bought all the old witchers 
And I was like, oh, shit, yeah. this is all on PC. Yeah, and you're not going to play that shit. Yeah, I just bought it because it was a great deal <laughs> on some great games. <laughs> yeah, you know? you know, you're like, wait a minute, that game's normally 40 bucks, and they only want 10 for it? Shit. Ching. Pull the uh, trigger, baby. And, like, it, I have, like, over 100 games in my Steam library. Five are installed. <laughs> you don't play. <laughs> Literally. I do. I, I, I uninstall five. games when I beat them. Like, I, I played... <laughs> yeah. I played the Wolfenstein games. I uninstalled them. I didn't keep them up. You guys keep True. games on your hard drive? Yeah. So I'm kind of like along the, the same boat as uh, as you, Willie. For me, I've got 307 games on my Steam library installed, um, ready to installed. go. Installed? Yeah. Ready to go. Where do you um, put I've that got... thing? <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Gary's got one of those like fucking like 1960s hard drives in the back. <laughs> That's his hard drive behind him. It's not. It's not a soundproof yeah. wall. Yeah, That's his hard it. drive. The hard drive. No, I just. I like to. For me, it's a question of choice. So, my time's limited too, but I love to have availability. It's why I've got. Like, I've got like 120 Vita games sitting there ready to go, that I could play at any time. I've got. I don't have much PlayStation anymore. I'll, I'll attest, but probably got about 400 PC games, all installed across Origin, UPlay, um, GOG, Steam, etc. But you never know. You might be like. 4 p.m. on a Saturday, and you suddenly think, you know, I, I'll, I'll pick, I'm just going to pick something out of here. Um, I'll, I'll pick Bioshock 2 Remastered, and I, I really want to play that. It's ready to go. Like, I could click it, start it, play it. So, for me, it's not about will I ever get around to my backlog. It's like it's there on, on command if I need it at any point. I don't feel like I need to play them to get accomplishment. I feel like purchasing them and owning them for me is the value. You know, I, I like to have things, I like, I'm a collector. You know, it's not playing it. I've completed it, and it's lost value. I understand value. that. I understand that. I feel that, Gary. Uh, part of me is proud when I look. I think I have three, uh, about 350 games on my PlayStation. And when I look in there and I see that there's 70 or 80 that I really haven't played, I do still feel that sense of accomplishment because I it's part of my library. But a part of me also is wanting to have played them and beat them. Games like The Witcher 3, Briar, he was very late to that game. Oh, I probably God. put 15... 15 to 20 hours into it when it first came out. And then I moved over to something else. And my wife, she sat next to me and beat it on her PS4. And she was about to leave me. She said, you fucking loser. Why did you stop playing this game? And I was like, <laughs> I was I was doing some, some other shit. And then maybe a year later, Briar got into it. Part of me feels sick because I know it's an incredible experience. Both loves of my life have told me to play it. Briar and my wife. And I, in that order, too. But, you know, I look I look at some of these games and part of me just wants to just get back in there and play. I, I just bought Thumper on PSVR. Mm -hmm. It's also just a regular PS4 game. Incredible, man. It's so awesome. It is incredible. And I'm like, I want to play this. I want to beat it. But I still got Sonic Mania here. And she's playing Uncharted 4 now. What do I do? Oh, watch YouTube. Fucked everything up. So <laughs> I'm happy. I guess to, like, answer your question, like, what can we do to, like get through those games without missing out on stuff I, I mean the only off like solution that i could really offer is like pick one day out of the week that you decide that you're going to go back to a game whether it be saturday sunday oh retro just, day just pick a day yeah. out of the week not even necessarily retro just anything Back that long. you've been meaning to play pick that day to play it and who knows maybe you'll make time for it another day but i'm gonna tell you right now destiny 2 is coming out and that shit ain't gonna yeah, work i'm fucked I really right, am. Shit ain't gonna work. You're just gonna Destiny have to. You're just coming. gonna have to get raid ready, get trials ready. We'll go to the lighthouse, and then we can talk about playing the rest of your games. All right. Yeah, we'll talk about this gonna, in like October. You guys gonna take me to the lighthouse? <laughs> yeah, we're going. Because yeah, I played. I played Crucible with you. You're no carry. Yeah, yeah fucking that's right. Part of that team, man. Yeah. We're going. Okay. We're, we're going. We're so, going to so lighthouse. I, I, I got three or four days to to try to play as much as I can. When Destiny Two comes, I'm I'm done. I'm going to be playing nothing but Destiny. Oh, you know, my God. Like for me, it's really about, like, I only have so much free time, so how much? How do I want to spend it? And, you know, all this shit costs money, too, right? And, like, yeah. if imagine if you saved all that money, put it in a little retirement account, and you could retire <laughs> 10 years Brian. earlier. You could retire 10 years earlier and start playing video games 24 hours a day. Brian, my wife is watching this live. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are going to go up. to college. The kids are going to go to college. Think about right. all that time. You're right. Think about all that she's time to play video games. She's Coming sooner for Briar than you, now. but hey, you know, his kids will be I'll going to hey. college I... sooner. Hey, oh, okay. Briar and I are the same age. <laughs> Listen, now I want to go into the living room after after the show is over. She's going to have a spreadsheet out. So it'll be games that you you were going to buy now. 
college fun. Fuck, Briar. No, no, I'm saying Briar. I think Briar's going to go to fun. college sooner than yours, so he'll be college he'll fun. be having that. Free I'm talking time retirement, soon. man. I mean, I'm talking often, a, a world where nobody needs anything from me. <laughs> I look at the same thing, and for me, my I time. Me, yeah, Briar. My, that's um, right. Me and my fiance, we're both like the biggest money wasting motherfuckers on the planet. Like we buy shit that we don't need all the time, like 24 seven. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, like the, I said earlier, there's a value in purchase. You know, there's, there's a, in the modern society we live in, you know, where it's so heavily driven on consumerism, it's one of the only highs that you can get anymore is, you know, just actually exchanging some money and getting an item for it. I feel like it's such a token, you know, Western thing to say, but you know, that, that is like, the closest thing you can get to happiness anymore, man. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, uh, I think it's that's something bullshit, that I get I think that's absolutely You think bullshit. so? Yeah. The, really? The, the key to happiness is not to spend your money on products, but to spend your money and your time on developing relationships and experiencing life. It, you do, you get that little dopamine trip every time you, you, you know, you buy like a new thing, but it's a, it's a short lived thing. It's an empty it's an empty happiness. It's not gonna. It's gonna enriching your life, right? The new toaster looks so shiny. And it's chrome, and it'll toast your toast twice as fast as the last toaster. And you can do four slices all at the same time. And you bring that thing home, and you put it on the counter, and you're like, "What's next?" It still <laughs> you know, won't because make that toast toaster. Fat. It still won't make toast as fast as Beasley's portable SNES, though. <laughs> no. Briar, to, 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 yeah. to counter your point, Briar. Yeah. It it still feels good to go out and buy lightsabers. In a year, those lightsabers will be sitting in the closet. You won't have looked at them in, you know, in six months. <laughs> have fun with that audio, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Just as an FYI for our audio listeners, that wasn't clever editing and sound effects. This is two child's lightsabers that he is now waving around like a special needs kid on a trip to Disneyland. Also, we that just got a copyright that. strike. What the hell? <laughs> Listen. These are not children's toys. My kids can't even fucking touch these. These are master replica mm. lightsabers, and they cost 120 bucks a piece. And I went and wasted money yesterday just to feel like Darth Vader's black stepson. See, I have the exact opposite. Like, like, okay, sometimes I'll buy shit and I'll feel good about it, right? You know what I mean? But most of the time, I buy shit, and then I'm like, now nah, I'm going to have to hustle that much harder at the studio to make up for it this month. Mm. It Damn. never fails. Like, you know what I mean? But... I mean, I had a yeah, nightmare sure. a couple of weeks ago that I had uh, bought a laptop and I was like, why did I buy that laptop? <laughs> Are you serious? I had a nightmare. <laughs> were you, wait, were you upset that you spent the money or that you bought an actual laptop? laptop. And not a, a little bit of both. A little bit a little of both. Bit of it both. was an impulse purchase. <laughs> <laughs> a laptop's a nightmare of mine, to be honest. Oh, my God. Yeah, for sure. I'll be living the PC dream pretty soon, guys. I promise. But I'll always be a console gamer true to my heart. There's some of us out here like Wilson and myself who love the console experience. I think PCs are cool and great, but I'll always be a console gamer in my big black heart. I love both, man. I got respect for both. I jump ship sometimes. I'll be on one side of the line or the other. Like when I was, you know, playing the Destiny 2 PC beta, oh, yeah. Like, what's a console? Yeah. You know what I mean? But <laughs> but realistically, man, that's, that's where I got to be, so word all right so the next topic is Perfect. is this the beginning of the end for the big single player game i know i've called it right here on the uh the <laughs> september 4th 2017 revolver live called it this is the end of single player games we're not going to see any more released it's just it's games <laughs> as a service from here on in they just um, canceled god of war 15 damn not happening, <laughs> not happening. No more, no more Uncharted, no more anything else. The Last of Us 2, gone. Um, yeah, it, I guess the point is that games as a service are much higher return on investment for the studios. Single player games are very much a one and done, and it's very difficult to monetize them to get the, the, the bigger the budget, the more copies you have to sell. And there's a finite limit because, you know, you're only going to get $60. Unless it's got a season pass with it with a load of DLC tied to it. But even then, it's only $100. And some of these games are getting more and more and more expensive. They're going to have four-year development cycles, things like Last of Us 2. God knows what that's going to cost. I don't know what God of War cost. 
And when games like Shadow of War try to add microtransactions into a single player game, they get really heavily penalised for it. You know, sentiment is really poor against Shadow of War just for trying to earn some money for a single player campaign. So do we think that big name franchises, things like Assassin's Creed and Uncharted, um, can probably ride the wave with their their brand affiliation? People are going to buy Assassin's Creed no matter what. Um, but games like Mass Effect Andromeda, pretty much lampooned the franchise you know that that game now needs a reboot the mass effect was one of the most prestigious series on the console or on on the you know in gaming for a single player adventure and andromeda single-handedly destroyed it so do you think that we're going to see games like destiny hop on the mmo light bandwagon and realize that we can keep people engaged for years on end from one single investment cycle and keep charging them with microtransactions and dlcs for two three years from one major franchise or am I just talking out my British ass? What do we think? Hmm. I think you make a pretty good point. I mean, obviously, like a lot of success in video games has come from multiplayer franchises <clears throat> that they're able to add DLC onto instead of um, pull resources for an entirely new game. You know what I mean? But as much as I am all about my multiplayer games and playing with friends, there is a time where I just want to sit down and not be bothered and completely immerse myself, whether that be uh, Breath of the Wild, um, Fallout. I've even had an itch to go back to old school Oblivion. You know Damn. what I mean? Like, yeah, because that's a really good game. And sure that's, that's probably one of my favorites of the Elder Scrolls, to be honest. But there's, like you said, like there's definitely going to be some established franchises like um, Bethesda. You know, they're going to be kicking out you know, very successful single player games. Um, Rockstar, you know, with uh, Red Dead coming up, even though I'm sure there'll be some sort of an online mode where you can run around and shoot at other people and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm seeing in chat, you know, like how they milk Skyrim, you know, like how many times has that game been re put out for, you know, every platform with an HD remake, remake and stuff like that. But I don't, I, yeah, yeah, VR. I see it 50-50. Like, I feel like there'll always be a need for both. But sure, I think it's an easier sell, in my opinion, with multiplayer. I feel like with single player, you're tar potentially targeting more of a broad audience. Whereas with multiplayer, like if your friends are playing it, you're more apt to play it sort of yeah. thing, like peer pressure. I, I think Wilson made some great points there. And I got to agree with you for the most part, Wilson. Um, my opinion is this. There will always be, you know, these single player experiences that are incredible. Uh, but something I think we'll see more and more of are single player games that have a multiplayer component. If anything, I think that's what will happen. If you look at some of the great single player games of recent years, they do have an, a multiplayer component. Tomb Raider, The Last of Us, Uncharted. These games are seminal single player experiences that are better than most, you know, of the Uncharted contemporaries. Uncharted Tomb Raider had a pretty good one too. Yeah. Oh, fuck you, Briar. Really? <laughs> the last of us had the best one, okay? The best. You were looking so fucking real with that, too. I see what he did there. Shit. <laughs> fucking I'm bitch done. bombs everywhere. Yeah, you fucking... <laughs> you dropped one on me just now, too. But I think that, you know, the, the Destiny uh, model is very um, profitable. Uh, we've seen games like Destiny at this point come out on consoles. Uh, trying to adopt that model to, to make more revenue. But I think that, like I said before, I think we're going to see a continuation of single-player experiences and, if anything, a, an additional mode that allows people to go online and maybe do microtransactions in that way. Because all the games I mentioned, you can go online in Uncharted, The Last of Us, Tomb Raider, and buy cosmetic items that funnel you know small amounts of funds back to the developer for their work. And I think that if a developer, unless it's a huge experience like what we've seen in Skyrim, uh, like we've seen in Fallout, these games are seminal experiences that are so grandiose that you, you you can literally be lost in the world for hundreds of hours. Those might those might be able to stand alone as a single player experience with some form of expansion. But uh, I think that single player games, as as we go on, will have some form of multiplayer component in the future. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think. That actually video games have the potential to be the most immersive form of storytelling that's like ever been invented, right? You're not passively watching a story or reading a story that you're not involved in. You're actually part of that story. And 
with VR, you're literally inside of that story, you know? Like, so having a single player experience go away, maybe the pricing's got to change. Maybe like gamers are going to have to accept 80 or a hundred dollar single player experiences if they want like the kind of grandiose stuff that uh, they've come to expect. Cause it's only going to get more expensive to develop video games as you know, as the standard comes to 4k and then and beyond, it's just going to get more and more expensive. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe we're going to have to start accepting that games are no longer $60. They're $80 or a hundred dollars. In fact, video games are actually cheaper than they've ever been. You know, it's, Games have been $60 for like 20 years now. And when you take into account inflation, they're much, much cheaper than they used to be. Yeah, much um, cheaper. I so mean, actually... Like, for me, it's like, I, I hope they, you know, I can never see them getting rid of single-player experiences because I eat them up like candy. Bioshock, uh, Bioshock Infinite, uh, Hellblade I recently played. Like, Oh, so good. Some of these games are, like, absolutely some of the best experiences I've ever had in gaming. And that's stuff you can't... Can't always have your buddy giggling next to you because it ruins the experience. You gotta be, you gotta be able to immerse yourself. Yeah, and like Hellblade, perfect example, Briar. You have the head, you actually have the headphones on. You're in that experience, and you're experiencing something, you know, a single player experience unlike any other game you ever played. That's something that you could never get in a multiplayer experience. Perfect example. And I remember, Briar, you remember when video game cartridges cost seventy four dollars. Yeah, you know, I remember buying Genesis cartridges that cost eighty. I think I bought Strider for the Genesis. That was eighty bucks. I think Fantasy I mean, Star so. was eighty bucks. Maybe even hundred bucks. Big box uh, Earthbound was like a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars back in the nineties. I can't believe my mom bought me that. I was lucky. She, as she, no, she loved you back then, Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. She loved you back then. A little less now after buying me that. You see what happened when you came. You see what happened. Yeah. You see, you see what happened when you came over. They got the hell out of there, man. Yeah, yeah they so. did. They went halfway across the country. Stocked that fridge with lunch, lunchables. He got the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Give him, give him some lunchables and a bic lighter, and he'll be fine. You know, like. <laughs> they know him so well. <laughs> <laughs> Tell oh, him the great. pig snort or the the cat snorts, snorts like a pig, so he doesn't get freaked out later. <laughs> I've had to, I don't know if you guys have noticed. I've had to mute my mic and yell back at the cat because I can hear it snoring over you guys. It's in the other room, for shit's sakes. What are they feeding this cat? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so Gary, this this is your topic. What are your final thoughts on this? Do you, what do you think is going to happen? I think we're going to continue seeing single-player campaigns, single-player um, stories. I think chat made some really interesting points that I hadn't thought about um, throughout our conversation, specifically around, you know, what, what do we think were some of the biggest games and most anticipated games of the year? They weren't necessarily service games. You things like Zelda and Horizon Zero Dawn, yep. moving forward, you know, Wolfenstein, The New Colossus, all of these are exclusively single player games with no multiplayer component whatsoever included in them and they were the headline games that people are really looking forward to to seeing and playing um so maybe the games of the service may be more monetizable on the long tail but the spike games that are going to generate you big bucks in the first month or the first weekend um seem to be the single player story driven campaign games so that's um def definitely some good points were raised there it's really interesting games as a service is a relatively new concept and g games like destiny are new to the marketplace and people are learning from this and i, I do think that you're going to see a lot more games uh similar to destiny where they really are meant to kind of have you stick around and have you mainline that game but i think it's going to be like a mmo situation where you have wow and then you have like a bunch of other ones, right? It's like, you, yeah, you can't have too many of these things in your life. So a lot of people are going to pick one and they might flirt with one or two along the way, but they're going to come back to their main a lot, whether that's destiny or not. I don't know. You know, it could that, be that, that, that kind of anthem comes us. out. It could be the anthem comes out and that's that perfects the game as a service model. And it, it you know, in 10 years, oh. we're talking about how anthem. Do you know what? Since playing Destiny 2 PC, my hype for Anthem has like tailed off hard, man. I've gone back and watched <laughs> that trailer so many times and it doesn't look as impressive anymore. I've got to say, once you've seen D2 PC running in all its glory, um, yeah. Anthem know, looks mate. like, oh God did you guys see the? Did me. you guys see the live action trailer for Destiny 2? We didn't even talk about that. that about a hundred times. Trailer. 
Dude, I literally changed my pants like four times watching that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I saw good. That, that even Mrs. Rabbit was like, I am so pumped for Briar and his friends. This gave me goosebumps. She, like the, she the production it. value. I saw it because I tweeted it out and she just follows me on Twitter. She watched it and she had to come into the office and be like, oh my God, that trailer was amazing. She that's really nice video games. That that is, that's real love, man. It doesn't get any better than that. You know, so I saw see. a lot. Of, I saw a lot of com- people. Like the only complaint that I saw that was voiced largely was that people are tired of them using like popular music from the seventies, eighties, and nineties. You know, Zeppelin and Beastie Boys. I say seventies. Somebody 80s complained about sabotage. <laughs> about sabotage and said that it was lazy picking a classic. You speak. And it's like do not have an opinion that is worth listening to. Yeah. Yeah. they have self. <laughs> selected themselves as part of the population that you don't need to listen to anymore. It's They've actually done you a favor, Wilson. You now know you can identify these yeah. people and not waste your fucking time on them anymore. It's really, they've done you a favor. Trigger, I, I, I haven't seen this live action trailer yet. Uh, I'm going to check oh, it out after the show. Sake. Yeah, you need to Always check it out, man, because I tell you right now, if you watch that and that doesn't give, get you the, the slightest bit of getting pumped for D2, then you got you guys see it. it had it had free bird in the background what was the background music no sabotage. it was uh, it was sabotage beastie okay. boys okay gotcha and it, it's so good the production value like i hate to say it but people said that it kind of reminded them of like a, a star trek trailer it kind of did like there was the classic jj abrams lens flare you know there was the the beastie boys sabotage but like damn did they paint a good picture of not only what the world is going to be like, what we're jumping into, but what it's going to be like for new players yeah. jumping in. Because that was the whole thing. This wasn't the same people that you saw in the previous live action trailers. These were new people being introduced to the world. And holy shit, am I pumped. Favorite part, no joke, where the Scions are in the hallway with their laser guns and it's all dark and then everyone pops their super and the Scion looks out from his scope like, <laughs> oh, shit. And the really? part is the yeah, hunter the running down the hallway shooting the gun over her yeah, head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that right after they all pop their super and the Scion looks out of his scope and is like, oh, shit, the Titans just standing there going, you know, he's got a super pop, you know, like letting him know that it's about to... It's, it's really it, good, man. It nails I'm the so comedy, the humor... It nails like the lightheartedness of the Destiny universe, but it also really gets the power fantasy of like you know all these guardians doing all this badass shit. It really it, it kills it. It's so much I better than that. that stupid multiplayer trailer they put out a month ago. Yeah, that was I, I want the gear. I want I want that stuff that they're wearing because these are real people in warlock titan mm. hunter ah. gear. You know what I mean? I man, it's a cosplay. You got that in an extra large? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that run? How does the the hunter helmet run? You know, like I got kind of a big dome, you know. Yeah, I got a lot of brain activity going on up here. Like four times XL if you're from Orlando as well. Just, just get that in there. Four X. Damn. But yeah, it, it, I think I was really excited because I'm not gonna lie, I kind of felt like they released the other live action trailers a lot sooner, and I was beginning to wonder if they were even going to do one so i was really happy like i was at work it dropped i watched it my buddy who's never played destiny before doesn't play video games anymore looked at that and was like holy shit man like that's the kind of stuff you're going to be doing and i'm like yeah man like with friends you know like this is this is awesome <laughs> he and, sold it nailed yeah, it. yeah he sold it like but he's like well you know this looks really cool man like he, he Wilson, par- pulled a gary <laughs> Hell yeah. Gotta pick it up. That's true. And then I got back to work, would put my piece, you know, get done with a step or two, put my piece back in the kiln, then sit down and I'd watch it again. I think before I got home, I'd probably watch that thing like 20 times at work. Do you know what? I feel like Destiny would make watching these sorts of things, not like so much a movie, because I know you mentioned that um, in the DCP, Briar, but I feel like Destiny would work really well on either. Do you remember the Starship Troopers series that they did Mm -hmm. that was like a. Live live action was it? No, it was it wasn't live action. But yeah, anime CGI. You know, it was. I don't know if you ever saw that in the nineties. I mean, Wilson's not even talking about. Yeah, like computer animated sort of thing. You know, if they did something like that, or even just a an actual drawn anime of Destiny, something that could be put out there. Man, I'd watch the shit out of that. That that would be impressive. I think like a movie. Every video game movie has typically been awful. So I'm trying to swerve that that uh, curse for Destiny. But Super Mario that's, Brothers was the greatest video game movie of all time. You should absolutely. Uh, Street Fighter. Is Street Fighter was the best. Where one? Hoskins did a shot of a woman's tits <laughs> as Mario. 
I think yeah. it is, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and they also they also kind of be selling me on it now. <laughs> yeah, they, they, were, they were also they stated that they were shit face wasted during the entire production of that film. Both of them guys were shit faced uh, the, the entire he, time. Is it the, that's the one where he broke his wrist during filming, and they just painted the cast the color of skin to just keep shooting. Did they I think really? that is, isn't it? Yeah, they were, they were shooting, and, and uh, Bob Hoskins was. Uh, I've watched a documentary on it. I love. I, I I like bad movies. It was um Bob Hoskins was Mario, and they did a stunt where he had to break really. You know, Luigi had to break really quickly in the car, and Bob didn't move his hand quick enough, and the door slammed closed, broke all the fingers in his hand, and he had a plaster cast on. And rather than delay the shoot, they just painted it skin coloured and just carried on with the shoot. So it was just amazing. Amazing that wow, you had like I a to check shit. that out. Like, yeah. Well, well you had Very mentioned strange. that uh, real quick, kind of back on topic. You had mentioned that Destiny would do really good with some sort of like um, <clears throat> live action short, you know, film, maybe like you know, thirty minute long episodes or something. I feel like uh, that would be a really good idea. But like, you look with like what uh, Halo did with Halo Legends. I don't know if you ever saw those animes. Yeah. They were fantastic, dude. It wasn't exactly the main story but it was side stories of other people in the universe. You know, how cool yeah. would it be to like, see like a side story of Ephrodite or, um, fell winter or, you know, anyone, uh, Osiris, you know, like I think that with the amount mm. of war that's in that game, sky's the limit. I don't even want that. I want to explore the residents of the last city, obviously not anymore. Cause they're just charred ashes of humans, but like before they were all dead, I just want like a, a a series set in the last city, like a political intrigue, almost like a Game of Thrones, you know, because there must be politicians that run that city. We're just like watchmen, you know, up in the tower. We're not down there seeing what goes on. I'd love to explore that and then their perception of what the Guardians do, because they don't see you on a day to day. You know, for all they hear, they hear like, you know, kid stories of you going off and killing alien races far away. You know, there's an inanimate object in the sky that they don't get any power from because they're not light and They're just humans living in a walled city. I don't know. I'd love to see that. Well, that would be. I'm more speaking of like the consensus, and like that's where like New Monarchy, Future War Cult, Dead Orbit, and even the Vanguard is part of the consensus. Like they're calling the shots. They, everybody else has to take things to the Vanguard. The Vanguard takes it to the Speaker, and the Speaker decides whether or not they're going to go through with it. So I mean, to be honest, it's kind of a dictatorship. To be real, because the Speaker could just be like, "Nah, bruh, we ain't doing that." Emphasis you know? on like, the dick. Dick, man, that's it. Bring Not the tater, a, just the dick. A tax on the dick. thongs or something for the city, you know. Just really be a dick about it. You know? Have yeah. you guys ever seen an anime called The Animatrix, which was, which was a film that had nine short films uh, based around the Matrix lore? Yep. And it was all anime, did, different yeah. different styles. I think something like that would work really well with Destiny, with just yeah. varying stories from different perspectives, told by different uh, directors and. That would be amazing as well. But I, I really agree with you, uh, Gary, on the whole idea of the Lost City and kind of the way it was functioning uh, before everybody got the shit wiped out of them. That would be awesome to see as well. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of lore you could touch on. I mean, like, Cade Six used to be human. You know, he used to work for Clovis Bray, and apparently he broke a bunch of shit. So to pay him back, he let them turn him into an exo. You know, like, wow, to see that, just, would that be story crazy. would be amazing. Like, seeing like a drunk Cade fumbling around, breaking like <laughs> trillion dollar equipment, and just being like, ah, eh, fuck it. You know, like, you can tell that we're excited awesome. to play Destiny because I think this is like the fourth time it's been brought up during this podcast. We can't Whoa. get away from it. We I can't, we can't just... stay away from it this week. I think we've just decided what the next Revolver skit's going to be. Who, who's who's going to be drunk Cade, and, and where are we filming this? <laughs> I think it should be Beastly. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. Time to go to the liquor store. His performance Damn. as the console hobo in the last one, I mean, it was breathtaking. It was breathtaking. If that doesn't get yeah, if that doesn't get nominated this year for I'll, I'll take Academy my award, award now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of the co hosts for Revolver Live and everyone who watches uh, us. That looks on, like more like Twitch. a booby prize than an award. Let me open it up so you guys I'd like to thank it. Yobo for making an awesome portable <laughs> Thank you, Yobo. I couldn't have I couldn't have I couldn't My toast has never been toastier. You. <laughs> you know, the rest of the world's Texas. out there trying to, like, you know, fight off the threat of North Korea and Beastie's buying their imports. Look at that thing. That was like <laughs> crafted in the wasteland. Oh, shit. This didn't pain. come from Kim Jong-un, you ass. <laughs> Literally funding terrorism. Yeah. yeah. Literally. That's like current tech in North Korea, man. That's like state of the art. That's what little kids are playing in Pyongyang. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have the most state-of-the-art advanced video game system, and it's the Yobo SNES portable. Yobo. <laughs> Yobo. <laughs> they wanted to call it... Uh, um, damn, I'm trying to think. What is it? Um, they wanted to call it Yolo. Hobo. But no, no, Yolo. They, wanted to, they wanted to call it but Hobo, it but nobody would allow them to, so they called it Yobo. <laughs> Yolo. You only live once, but it was already taken. <laughs> I like that. Are we all done with our topics, sir? Or- I yeah, think we more. are. All right. Yeah, we've we've blown nice. our load one more Damn. week. Um, we and need not to, we prematurely. Need to... It lasted for two hours. That's a hell of a night for anybody. I mean, is it impressive right? to think that this time next week we will be drawing us all away from Destiny Two to talk? Damn, yeah, this episode's gonna be twenty minutes long. <laughs> hey guys, what you been doing? Playing Destiny? Playing Destiny? Playing yeah, Destiny? Destiny. Play... Thanks Maybe we'll for... just live stream us playing Destiny. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll just do it the Maybe Destiny we'll. 2 Revolver episode. Because <laughs> if I'm not playing it, damn it, I want to be talking about it. Yeah, for real. And if I'm not yeah, talking I about it, wait. I want to be playing it. One or the other. Yeah, I think, one or the other. I think maybe chat can talk about us. Commenters, people in, in chat now and people that watch the YouTube video, throw up a comment if you want to see a, a Destiny 2 special next week where we just... Go all out. We we go balls deep talking about Destiny Two. I think that's uh that's what we'll all care about. No one will have anything else to talk about. So nice. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Beastly, what you got going on this week? Anything you want to well, pimp? I I got some new tech for my my studio. I bought myself right. a tele a teleprompter. You just bought and... yourself a bunch of work. Now you have to script every video so that you can that you can justify the purchase of a teleprompter. That's what you just did to yourself. <laughs> Damn it, Briar. You can't ever be a cup half full kind of fucking guy. Holy shit. Damn it. I was excited until I told you I had it. Exposed. Straight up exposed. You know you can get a program for your computer that just scrolls down the text for free. Yeah, but I didn't want that. I wanted an actual teleprompter, okay? Yeah, but this is a device. Can we see it? Can we see it? You know, I, I don't want a PC screen elitist. I, you know, I want the real fucking deal. I'm Get the teleprompter <laughs> out. Go on. He's got to show us his new toys. He's already yeah, got the lightsabers it. out. He's got I, this. I hope your wife fucks with you and, like, changes up a word or two in there for you so that you yes. have to read out. <laughs> I hope that, too. Yeah. It so it's on a tripod. So are you going to be, like, standing in front of the green screen doing videos? Yeah. I want to be doing it all, Briar. New, doing it all. Whatever you guys want, yeah? Whatever we want. A- anything, Briar, for you. We'll talk later. This is like, it, it's just got everything, the ingredients to make a new Anchorman spin-off with you. It's fantastic. I like it. Super excited. What are you guys going to be up to for the next couple of days? Destiny 2. I, Destiny I 2. So, <laughs> I, got a, I got a new streaming PC coming from On Air PC that's arriving on Tuesday. I got to set that thing up and get going. Get going, because that raid comes out seven short days after the release of Destiny 2, and I plan to be raid ready. Raid ready. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Friday following that, we gotta we're gonna jump in and do some trials, right? Yeah. All right. That'll be fun. We are going be a to lot the of lighthouse fun. straight there. I've never been to the lighthouse before. I'm afraid of uh of water too, so I gotta stay in the lighthouse. Eh, it's easy. It'll be there's, trust me, there's no water at the lighthouse. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> You're you're pretty close to Mercury, so water content is at a minimum. Yeah, it's low. <laughs> low yeah, to nil. For sure. And this week, if all goes well, we may even see the first Revolver live stream. So um, if you've not already followed the Revolver live Twitch, uh, I'd recommend heading over and following. Because um, we're going to be, I guess, streaming as a, as a group, as individuals. Uh, it's really a community stream for us all. To, to jump onto when we when we feel the urge, but uh, the we, we like to think here. of it as the gangbang of live streams. Damn right, yeah. <laughs> like, we, we kind of like run train on that Twitch key. We kind of just you know well, run she in, wants one out. in that, We'll be there. Yeah. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> Keeping it totally consensual. Revolver here. Live <laughs> and, and the hosts of Revolver Live do not endorse rape in any way. <laughs> Rape, I'm talking about live streaming. What the hell? To be fair, 75% of the hosts do not endorse in any way assault of any individuals of any kind, sexual or non sexual. Um, the other 25, you know, the jury is still out. But... Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. 
All right, is that gonna do it, guys? It was a good show. It's glad to have everybody back. I missed you guys. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was a good time for sure. Felt very All right. natural. Chat, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We will see you next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. with six fresh new topics. Revolver okay, out. I think that's it. Revolver out. Or just oh, Destiny 2. Wait, 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 We never finished the, the, the Pornhub quiz. But it, <laughs> These people oh, yeah, there, there was waiting a Pornhub two quiz. hours for their answers. <clears throat> two hours for their answers. The most searched term was stepmom, um, and the country step-mom. that spends the... Yeah, the most searched term on Pornhub in 2016 was stepmom, which I found huh. weirdest of all. disconcerting. Um, and then finally, the country that spends the longest time per visit is Venezuela, who spends 12 minutes per visit. Good night, everyone. There you go. Your answer. Oh, minutes is the wow. All right. Damn. Hi. We can suck. That is take that, information take that with that you. Could be scarring to me. The more you know. <laughs>